Hi everyone, welcome and good morning everyone to the class. I'm your teacher Ankita. I'm Aishwarya and today both of us together are going to be doing the complete NCRT questions yes. for full biology, right? So all the five chapters that are there, we are going to be covering it together today. And of course, good morning to all of you, right? Yes, good morning And I hope everyone. all of you are excited and ready for the class today. Yes, it's okay. Good morning everyone, good morning, welcome to the class, right, welcome to the class, if you are new here, please do take a moment and subscribe to the channel and if you are already being with us for a long time, ask your friends to quickly join the session, right, we'll, we'll just wait for one more minute and then we will start the class. Yes, and today there is no waste of time, we are going to get yes. started almost immediately, right, because as we know your time is very important to all of us. So quickly everybody, we are going to be doing the NCRT question, so have your notebooks and pens and textbooks open with yes. you so that you can make a note of all the important pointers. And please make sure that you go ahead and share this video and hit the like button. So before we get started, at least Ankita Ma'am and I together should be having a minimum of 200 likes on this video because that's how you show us your love. And everyone, very quickly, I hope our audio, our video and our screens and what we are writing on the screen is visible to all of you. Yes, good morning everybody, good morning. So 215 of you are here, so let's have 200 likes everyone and then definitely we'll be moving ahead with the class. So I hope that all of you are in a good spirit and a great health. As ma'am mentioned, have your textbook, it's really very important because you can check the question. And do have a notebook and a pen so you can make the important notes that we'll be discussing throughout the session. I will be leaving now and right ma'am over to you. So I will be meeting you guys after some time. All the best. Please make sure to pay attention and enjoy. Bye ma'am. Alright, thank you so much ma'am. So everybody, as you all know, right, so how long is today's class going to be? We will try to wind it up in two, two and a half hours. But of course, everyone, if at all it takes us a little more time, it's okay because at the end of the day, it is important that we all pay attention. And yes, we will make sure that we do poll questions. So Ranjit, we need to have poll questions. And can we increase my size in the beginning as well a little more? It's a little small, right? Okay, exam era has begun and of course yesterday you had your social studies marathon. Of course, I was not able to make it because I was in another class and I could not wind it up on time. But I hope that you enjoyed and for those of you who are new to the class, I welcome all of you. And very quickly everybody, I hope that we are ready to get started. So a quick school level check and let, I mean, a quick enthusiasm level check and let's get started for today's class. Yes? All right, everybody, just give me one moment. Okay, very good, everyone. Very good. All right, so let's get started with the class today. So as we all know, we are going to be doing the, the first future. I mean, we are going to be doing all the biology chapters for NCRT. And we're doing the NCRT questions. Now we're going to do the exercise questions which are there at the back of the chapter. Okay, so we'll have about 10, 10 to 12 questions per chapter. Now the thing is, we are going to discuss all the NCRT questions. And I'll tell you what are the important ones in that as well, right? So now of course, I am going to take the first two chapters that is control and coordination and of course, I will be doing life processes and Ankita Mama is going to do the last next three chapters that are going to be there. So everybody, we will do all the important questions and we're going to get started with life processes. So are we ready? Are we ready for life processes? So quickly everyone, make sure that we go ahead. Now in text questions, of course, see, I will tell you your in text questions are important. I mean, they are important and they are of course, we will be doing it, of course, later on in the future. But see, most often than not, some of your questions in your exams directly come from your NCRT exercise also, which is why we focus more on NCRT exercise. So are we all ready? Okay, very good. So let's get started now. Ranjit, we need to have YouTube polls as well. So can we have that set up? Okay, ma'am, life processes. What are life processes? Okay, life processes can be simply defined. So in the meanwhile, as Ranjit sir sets up the YouTube polls for the first few questions of the multiple choice questions, we're going to I'll quickly tell you what do we mean by life processes. Now before I tell you, can you tell me what are life processes? Quickly in the chat. I will discuss, Aman, don't worry. Exemplar questions also we will do, bacha, don't worry, okay? Can you tell me what do we understand by life processes in the meanwhile while Ranjit sir sets up the YouTube polls? 
is a process which is what? Can you tell me? Hello, hello. Exactly, they are necessary for survival. Processes which are essential for life or processes that are essential for survival is what we understand as life processes. So your key word in this answer would be survival. So now with this, of course, we have four life processes that we have studied in this chapter. That is nutrition, respiration, transportation and diet and excretion. So now with this, of course, let's have a look at the first question. Can we have the polls live, please? The kidneys in human beings are part of the system for DASH. So it's a one mark question, part of your section A. Is it nutrition, respiration, excretion and transportation? So which among the following is the correct option here? Now, as you can see, the poll is live on screen. So let me, because I think the poll is there, I'm not able to see the options. Quickly go ahead and vote. The YouTube polls are available on the live chat. I'm going to quickly let you vote so that we can move ahead and do a quick explanation. Yes, this is a very easy one, right? We're talking about the function of kidneys and what are they a part of? Which system, right? They are part of a certain system that facilitates which life process? That is what we need to understand. What are erythrocytes? Erythrocytes, but suryavir are nothing but red blood cells, right? It's another name for red blood cells. Halva question, very good. 200 odd votes are here. So let's wind up the poll and let's see what the answer says. Let's close the polls, please. Very good, 86 of you have got the answer correctly because when we talk about kidneys, kidneys are part of which system? They are part of the human excretory system. What do they do, right? What, what function do they carry out? They carry out the function of excretion. And what do we understand by excretion? It is the removal of harmful metabolic waste from the body. So metabolic and catabolic processes are called as life processes. So see again, when you say metabolic, it's mostly anabolic, catabolic. But you don't need to go into detail because when you talk about anabolic, catabolic processes, they are with respect to the chemical reaction. But there are some reactions that are there that do take place which can be catabolic and anabolic that may or may not be categorized as a life process. So preferably you say process this is essential for survival for life is what we call as that right for sustenance of a living organism so moving on when you talk about this the correct answer is option c right which is excretion now for those of you who are very new to class probably attending my class for the first time my name is aishwarya and i also teach biology right so moving on right ma'am does kidney purify blood yes you can say in a certain sense because at the end of the day it is removing your toxic material right so you can say that now moving on to the next one which is the xylem and plants are responsible for what one more question again let's have the poll please Again, this is a halwa question, right? Halwa question that is going to be there for all of you. So quickly when the poll comes live, you can vote. And like I said, your time is very valuable. So I'm going to focus on the important ones. So we're talking about function of xylem, right? And what do we know? Xylem is a complex permanent tissue that plays a key role in transport, right? Now transport of what is what you need to identify. And I can see that we have a good number of votes already, 234 votes, yes? So in this case, right, I can see most of you have voted. So let's close the polls, please. You guys are super fast in voting. So I guess we can wind up the polls and I can see that most of you here have got the answer correctly, right? So in this case, we see that the correct answer here is option A, that is transport of water. Now, when we talk about xylem, like I told you, xylem is made up of tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma and fibers. And they play a very important role in transport of water and minerals. Now, when we talk about transport of food, who is responsible for transport of food substances? Can you tell me very quickly in the chat? Who is responsible for transport of food substances? Yes? In the chat, I need you to tell me very quickly. Those of you who are saying, ma'am, you will actually do all NCRT questions, all NCRT exercise questions. Let me be clear about that. The ones that are there at the back of your textbook, which are very exam relevant, is what we are doing. 
Exactly. We score. Uh, it is phloem, right? So phloem is what is responsible for transport of food. So in this case, we see that the this is done by phloem and transport of oxygen, of course, is mainly taking place through diffusion. Do we have to learn parts of xylem phloem? See, you need to see structure of xylem phloem. You've learned in your lower grades per se, right? You already know about it. So here, when it comes to xylem, what is it that you need to know? You need to know about transpirational pull. You need to understand the characteristics. How exactly is that transport taking place, right? So ascent of sap is a concept that you need to know about. And in the case of phloem, you should understand how exactly because we know that in phloem transport, there is difference of osmotic pressure, there's utilization of ATP. So you need to have a basic understanding of that, right? So with this, of course, everyone, we're moving on to question number three very quickly, right? Question number three. Autotrophic mode of nutrition requires what? Let's have the pole light, carbon dioxide and water, chlorophyll, sunlight or all of the above. We are talking about autotrophic mode of nutrition. So after you do the poll, I want you to tell me what do you understand by autotrophic mode of nutrition? Can you tell me very quickly in the chat, what do we understand as autotrophic mode? So once you are done, please do give me the answer for that as well. So by solving these NCRT questions, what's effectively happen, happening? You are doing a full syllabus revision. You are doing a full chapter revision, looking at the important concepts and this will help you apply your concepts better as well. Okay. Ma'am, they make their own food. They are self-nourishing, self-dependent, self-producers. Ma'am, they make their food on their own. Very good, all of you. Very good. Very proud. I'm going to put a star mark for all my kids here because you've done a brilliant job. So we can close the polls and as we know, autotrophic mode of nutrition is when they prepare their own food, right? And we know that green plants mainly prepare their own food. And what do they need? They require carbon dioxide and water as their raw materials. They require sun and this particular process, we know that requires sunlight and chlorophyll as well. So that ultimately they can prepare their own food and they also give out oxygen as a byproduct and this process that is there is what we understand as photosynthesis right so they prepare their own food especially green plants they prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis ma'am poll ka scroll nahi ho raha hai just refresh it so that you can go ahead and take it up right so are we all clear are we clear so far with whatever we have discussed so in this case, of course, this answer is marked wrong. The correct answer is option D, that is all of the above. Do not pay attention to this one. The correct answer is all of the above. It requires carbon dioxide and water. It requires chlorophyll. It requires sunlight. And of course, because of all of this only, they'll be able to carry this out. Yes? Okay. Give me a quick thumbs up, everybody, if we are good to go. Ma'am, difference between parasitic and saprophytic. See, parasitic is when, so let me change this. So parasitic that is there is when an organism is entirely dependent on another living organism and it derives nutrition from it, right? So here this is the parasite and this right here is the host organism and the host organism is living, right? But in saprophytic, what do you observe? In saprophytic, we see that they are found growing on dead and decaying organism, right? So they obtain their nutrition from dead and decaying. So that is what is the difference between the two. Now moving on to the next one. The breakdown of pyruvate to give carbon dioxide, water and energy takes place where? Cytoplasm, mitochondria, chloroplast or nucleus. We're talking about breakdown of pyruvate to give carbon dioxide, water and energy. Yes? Ma'am, will questions come from outside NCRT? Questions will not come from outside NCRT, but questions can be an application of NCRT based concepts, right? You can get competency based questions, activity based questions. So you need to pay attention to all of those as well. Okay? So that is one thing. Menti, please, this is going to be an NCRT solution with subjective questions, so no Menti. Okay, very sorry about that. So everybody, quickly.
All right, I can see 279 votes are there. So with that, of course, very quickly, we are going to wind up the polls as well very soon because I know most of you have got the answer here. Talking about breakdown of pyruvate into carbon dioxide, water and energy, which are the end products of your cellular respiration, right? So in this case, what is the answer? Let's have a look. Can we scroll back? Yes, very good. Most of you, I think around 67% of you got, have marked B as the answer. But around 23% of you have gotten confused here. Now see, we know that what is the raw material for your respiration. We know that raw material is nothing but glucose, right? So whether it is aerobic or anaerobic respiration, your raw material is glucose. Now what happens is that glucose first gets converted into pyruvate in the cytoplasm, right? So conversion of glucose to pyruvate is in the cytoplasm. But at the same time, when we talk about pyruvate getting broken down, giving you carbon dioxide, water and ATP, that is in, and that too in the presence of oxygen, it is in the mitochondria. So for the 23% of you who went wrong here, I hope all of you are clear, right? Yes, ma'am, ye wali table dimag mein chhap gai hai. Very good. That is what we need to go. A scent of sap is nothing but basically how you, your water gets transported to the upper parts, right? That is what it is. Very simple. So don't get worried. Exactly, glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. Ma'am, could you please define metabolism? So metabolism can be simply defined as the sum total of the chemical reactions that are taking place within our body, right? So there are so many chemical reactions that are happening. So that is what we understand as metabolism, right? So very simple and easy. Example of parasitic plant is your cascuta. That is an example. So are we all clear? Ma'am, how can I revise this concept? So make a table by yourself and try to understand the basic concept, right? So that is something that you need to do. So are we all clear with the one markers? All of you, I would say, have scored. I think we had about a total of four questions. You have scored four out of four in your marks. I mean, if I have to give you marks, four out of four in your section A, you have scored, right? Crystal clear? Good to go? Amazing. Yes, this is what I want. Krebs cycle, you don't need to know for board exam. Okay, see, there are things we teach you over time for better understanding, but you don't need to know things that are not relevant for board exam. Not at this point of time when your boards are very close by, right? So please make sure that you are paying attention. Now moving on to question number five. Yes, question number five, everybody on your screen. It's a subjective question now. Now, if you think about it, a similar kind of question has come in your sample paper also, right? But not directly, but indirectly it has come. How are fats digested in our body and where does this process take place? So you have three marks. Now here, if you think about it, you, you get two marks here. You get one mark for this part. So that is how your marks distribution is going to come. Everybody has given me, okay? Everyone has gone ahead and given me second part of the answer. What is the first part? First part is what I want. See, don't give me in whole words, okay? You can write the key points that are there. Glycogen is how glucose is stored in our body, right? So glucose is stored in the form of glycogen. Very good, Darshika. I can see some of the answers are there. Bile salts, emulsification, bile juice, liver. I can see the key points coming out here and there. Very good, very good. So that is what we are looking for, right? Yes, very good. Thank you, smiley smile. Thank you so much. Wonderful! I am extremely proud of all of you. You all need to give a pat on your back because all of you have got the key pointers. So how will you start your answer? Now say you know the concept. Now what I am more focused on is how you write your answer. So how will you start this? You will start by saying that fats cannot be directly uh, what do you say? They cannot be directly digested by the action of enzymes, which is why there needs to be an intermediate step in between. So we see that fats, which exist as large droplets, right? So we see that they exist as large droplets, or you can use the word large globules. They exist as large droplets or large globules. And we see that they need to be broken down into smaller droplets, right? So see here, I will put the keywords. I think you are not able to see the way I'm writing it. I'm just going to move it above to the side. So we see that large droplets, 
are broken down into smaller droplets and how is it done now see i'll tell you one thing exam may what are your keywords these are your keywords okay your key point should be there that they are large droplets broken down into smaller droplets by the action of bile salts present in bile juice and we know that this bile juice that is there is produced by the liver and excess of it is stored in the gallbladder now once the fa and this process is what we call as emulsification right so this is what we understand as emulsification of fats now once the fats are emulsified then we see that there is action of lipase enzymes and we know that lipase enzyme is produced in the pancreas and in the small intestine as well so we see that lipase enzymes will then break down emulsified fats into fatty acid and glycerol right so this is what we understand by this now with this of course you need to write down where exactly this takes place so you will have to write both pancreas and you will write have to write about a small intestine as well so with this of course you see that your answer comes into the picture so how can you write your answer let's have a look so Yes, thank you, Ranjit. So, before we go ahead, you start off by saying that fats are macronutrients which cannot be directly digested by the action of enzymes. Large fat globules are first broken down into smaller droplets by the action of bile juice, or you can say bile juice containing bile salt. This process is what we call as emulsification of fats. Right now, these emulsified fat droplets are then digested by lipase enzyme, breaking it into fatty acid and glycerol. Right, and in the end, the digestion of fats. You have to write this. Digestion of fats takes place in the pancreas and in the small intestine. You write this. See now. what i want you to focus on i want you to focus on the structure of the answer and see how i've underlined the key points on your paper presentation so with this if you do i will give you 3 marks right so take a screenshot if you need to take it or of course we'll share it in our telegram channel as well so don't worry about it ma'am pancreas yes exactly because i'll not say it takes place in the pancreas yes it is uh, facilitated by the pancreas i'm very sorry made a small mistake it takes place in the small intestine or i'll say in the regions of the small intestine very sorry about that right here also i did mention pancreas but it is regions of the small intestine specifically the duodenum and thus um, in the ileum region yes sorry about that i made a small mix up there so are we clear are we all clear glycolysis is nothing but the breakdown right it is the breakdown of your fat it is mainly breakdown of i mean breakdown of glucose into pyruvate that's what we call as glycolysis ma'am what is respiration Res ma'am how what does plant release in respiration same carbon dioxide is released in plant respiration as well right very simple how long does this session for our aim is 2 hours right because we have five chapters to finish 2 hours is what we are going to focus on gastric glands are glands which are present in the stomach that produce a lot of these enzymes that are necessary right yes and see make sure that you explain this point wise as well amino acids i'm sure uh, tilak i think you're just saying amino acid i'm not able to understand exactly so please little be uh, be a little more clear with your question next one is a two mark question which is what is the role of saliva in the digestion of food yes so what is the role of saliva in the digestion of food very quickly can we mention the work of lymph here see you don't need to because they are not asking you how is fat transported right i think some of you are uh, asking me that you don't need to write about how fat is transported all you need to write down is how exactly is fat broken down the digestion how does it take place and where does it take place right i'm sorry that in the explanation instead of saying that pancreas secrete lipase i said it takes place in the pancreas that's my bad but mainly it takes place in the small intestine the duodenum and ileum region okay 
Very good, exactly. So here two marks means you need to write two points, right? What is the role of saliva in the digestion of food? Now primarily they are saying digestion, right? So you have to have to write the fact that saliva is a watery fluid that secretes salivary amylase, right? And we see that this salivary amylase acts on complex carbohydrates such as starch, right? And it breaks it down into simple sugars or I would say into simpler forms is what I will prefer not simple sugar but simpler forms that are there which is why in this case I'm just going to move aside right so it is converted into simpler forms now apart from this we see that it's able to do this because it consists of an enzyme which is called as salivary amylase now apart from this you can write one more point which says that apart from this saliva also softens the food right and it also binds the food particles together resulting in the formation of bolus right and thereby we are able to swallow the food and further digestion can take place which is why in this case this is how you can write the answer two marks you will get so here breakdown of starch into simple sugar molecules or simpler sugar molecules as it contains salivary amylase is a must, right? While your softening of food and binding it together resulting in formation of bolus can be an added function, right? So that is something that you need to do. Ma'am, paramecium takes in food by cilia. Iske baare mein itna to pata chalega. Tanishk, I mean, you don't need to spend too much time in that, right? So the main focus there is just going to be how the food is taken in. That is all that we need to do. Ma'am, amylase pro is protective for our teeth. Um, amylase ka function mainly, see, it is the nature of saliva that is there. But of course, protection of teeth that is there, it, it also comes from the regular cleansing of mouth also. So that is something that you need to do, right? All right, very good, very good. See, lingual lipase is there. See, lingual lipase, gastric lipase, all of that is there. But it's not very effective because we know that there is no emulsification that has happened, right? Ma'am, where is maltose formed? Maltose is starting to form in the mouth. So, the simple sugar is nothing but maltose, right? So, that is what we understand by it. Ma'am, what is amino acid? Amino acid is the simplest form of protein, right? So, that is what we understand by that. Moving on to the next one. What are the necessary conditions for autotrophic nutrition and what are its byproducts, right? So very quickly, what are the necessary conditions for autotrophic mode of nutrition? I will explain nephron, bacha. There's a question coming on nephron. I'll explain it then, okay? All right, very good. See, on lymph and everything, if you want a detailed explanation, Ankita ma'am has done a recorded video on lymph where she has gone in detail about the function of lymph. So you can go watch that video as well. It's going to be a five minute video max where you will be able to get an understanding. So do check that video out, right? Yes, all right. Very good, everyone. Very good. So in this case, we're talking about what are the necessary conditions for autotrophic mode of nutrition. So here are two marks. What are the byproducts? You will get this for one mark, right? So now, of course, in this case, when we talk about autotrophic mode of nutrition, we know that it is the mode of nutrition wherein we know that they prepare, uh, we see that there are organisms that prepare their own food, right? Now, we know that green plants are an example of organisms that prepare their own food and they do this by the process of photosynthesis. Now, in photosynthesis, we understand that the raw materials that are required include carbon dioxide and water. And we know that chlorophyll and sunlight that is there are considered to be necessary conditions right so in this case what are the necessary conditions chlorophyll sunlight and the raw materials which include water and carbon dioxide now what are the byproducts the byproducts of it include glucose right and they produce oxygen as a byproduct so in this case we see that this here is the accurate representation so when you're writing the answer for autotrophs like green plants, you can't just say for autotrophs, right? It's not that all autotrophs are green plants. So understand that when you're writing about autotrophs, say that 
for autotrophs like green plants nutrition is obtained by the process of photosynthesis and what are the fo what is necessary for photosynthesis sunlight carbon dioxide and water and it also requires chlorophyll as it is necessary as it plays a key role in converting light energy into chemical energy yes and we know that it gives out glucose as a byproduct and oxygen as well so are we all clear if you write this you will get 3 marks yes Ma'am, blue-green algae also. See, you can write blue-green algae, but unnecessarily, why do you want to complicate your answer? If you know that green plants is the easiest example you can give for photosynthesis, you give easy examples. Why do you want to twist your answer? Simple. Uh, Devanshi, see, you don't need to go in details of light and dark reaction, right? I am teaching only on a board examination front, okay? Board examination front is all that I am teaching about and for all that you don't need it, which is why I am making it clear for you. Yes, parasitic nutrition, which I've already explained, right? Role of bile juice, I've already explained. Please go back and check it out, okay? Ma'am, glucose is a why glucose is a byproduct because see, it is given out, right? What are the end products of it? Glucose is the end product along with oxygen, right? So that is what we mean by it, the end products that are there. So you see, if you see the answer also, glucose is the product, but oxygen is the byproduct. So we are mentioning that as well. Role of amino acids, they are building blocks, right? They are building blocks of our body. So proteins that are made are made with help of amino acids. Okay. All right. You will get the PDF. Don't worry about it. Or you can always take a screenshot, right? See, compensation point in photosynthesis. Again, examination front for your board exam. You don't need to go in detail, which is why... As much as I want to teach you extra things, I don't want to confuse all of you. You need to remain focused as to what is necessary on a board front. So are we all clear? Ma'am, do we have to mention if the question comes? See, you can mention it can be supporting also. You can add the reaction as well. But when you're writing the chemical reaction, balance it. If you don't balance the chemical reaction, you will lose marks. Okay. But since the question was very specific, we know that we are not going into details of it, right? The question is very specific as to what are the necessary conditions and what are the byproducts or end products, right? Okay, I will teach the first two ones. Then Ankita ma'am will come. Sphincter kya hota hai ma'am? Sphincter actually a circular muscle hota hai. It's a circular muscle like this, okay? So we find it in uh, the, especially in the opening of the stomach and the closing, you find these sphincter muscles which will close and open that allows entry, right? So if you don't want things to go back, we see that the sphincter will remain closed. Okay, ma'am, about trypsin. Trypsin is again a protein digesting enzyme that is produced by the pancreas part of the pancreatic juice. Coming, all of us coming back to the next one, which is differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Question number eight. It's for five marks. Scoring question, okay? Now, name some organisms that use the anaerobic mode. So, here you have four marks for this and one mark for this, all right? Now, four marks will come for differentiate means you will have to write four pointers. So, now, of course, here only I'm going to write for aerobic. I can see all of you giving me the answers. So, in this case, I'm going to quickly write this down, which is anaerobic, right? So, now, of course, if you see, what are the four points of difference you'll have to write? You'll have to first write about presence or absence of oxygen. Then you can write about where it happens, right? And then you can talk about how much ATP or how much energy is produced, right? And then you can talk about what are the byproducts or I would use a better word here. What are the end products of this? Now, these are four points of differences that you should remember. And if you are able to remember this, the rest of the question becomes very easy. So, let's learn more about aerobic and the differences between aerobic and anaerobic. Now, when we talk about aerobic respiration, we know that it takes place in the presence of oxygen. So, I'll write it in a table so that it makes it easy for me, right? So, I'm just going to use a table for my comfort. Aerobic. So first I told you it is based on presence or absence of oxygen, right? So here we see that this particular process takes place in the presence of oxygen while this takes place in the absence or you can say temporary deficiency of oxygen, right? Now where is the location, right? Where does this particular thing take place? So where is the location? We see that aerobic respiration mainly takes place in the cytoplasm, 
right? So we see that the steps take place in cytoplasm plus mitochondria. So we see that this is where it takes place. But in this case, we see that it mainly takes place in the cytoplasm. Now moving on to talking about the end products, right? So if I were to talk about the end products, we see that mainly we see that ATP is produced, but of course carbon dioxide and water is the end products or the byproducts. Now when you're writing for anaerobic, you have to be specific, right? So in this case, what do you need to write about? You'll have to write about in skeletal muscles, right? So we see that in skeletal muscles, it will be lactic acid, yes? But in other organisms like yeast, it will be alcohol. So it will be alcohol, water and we'll have carbon dioxide. And when you talk about how much energy is produced, right? So when we talk about how much energy, we see that high amounts of energy is produced as a result of aerobic respiration. And here, see, I'm using the word relatively, right? So relatively lesser amounts of energy is produced so everybody do you want to take a screenshot of this yes do you all want to take a screenshot i'm going to step aside so that you can take a screenshot yes what is the difference between product and end product byproduct see product is what is formed as the result of the reactants right so when the reactants come together we see that they give you a product Yes, either by combining, either by displacement reaction, whatever chemical reaction takes place, right? But at the same time, a byproduct is produced as a result, like it is not the main intent. So when the product was getting formed, we saw that some other component also got formed, not as the main intent of it, right? Which is why that is what we call as a byproduct. So have you all taken a screenshot? Can I go to the next slide? Yes? Can I take a, go to the next slide? Can we say anaerobic uh, in human muscles? You can say in skeletal muscles, but you need to specify in which condition, right? So that is what we mean by it. Now moving on when you're writing the answer, this is how you will have to represent the answer, right? So four points in tabular form. Yes, so it has to be in this manner. Only when once you do that, you will get four marks. And there was one point which also asked you to specifically call you out, specifically mention the organisms, right? So here bacteria and yeast, we see that in organisms like this, we observe anaerobic respiration. You will get one mark, total of five marks. Abhishek Gaming, I hope you love biology as well. So please stay focused, okay? Will we get the PDF? You will definitely get the PDF right very good no menti today yes exactly today there is going to be no menti so please stay focused so are we all clear so far nephron diagram i will explain to you bacha i i mean the nephron structure i have a question based on this it makes more sense for me to explain it then so please stay focused right so ma'am even in the lack of oxygen anaerobic respiration yes you can say absence or lack of oxygen or deficiency of oxygen you can mention that right so can you give me a quick thumbs up everybody quick thumbs up genotype phenotype everything related to heredity you can check with ankita ma'am when she comes and does heredity uh, chapter is everything good to go Devil is saying, ma'am, no, what happened? If you have doubts, you tell me. But if it's nephron diagram, I'm going to teach you when I do the nephron question. Okay, that is something I'm very clear about. Simran, what is the problem? You tell me the problem. Okay, very good. Good. Can we write in points? Of course, you have to write in points, right? So that is something that I would always recommend. Good, everybody. Good, good. Very good. So now, of course, with this, we are going to move on to the next one, which is how are the alveoli designed to maximize the exchange of gases? How are they, you know, what, what benefits or what makes them, uh, you know, help or facilitates maximum exchange of gases? Everybody is telling me ma'am large surface area. It has large surface area which is why uh, we see that it is able to uh, do this, right? Large surface area is provided. But how is large surface area provided? That is a question, right? How exactly is large surface area provided? Their elasticity, okay, rich supply of blood vessels, sac-like structures, all right. ATP, ADP cycle, bacha, I'm not going into details, but basically when ATP gets converted to ADP, ATP is ATP triphosphate. When it becomes diphosphate, one inorganic phosphate is released out. And when that happens, some amount of energy gets released. Okay. 
Yes, very good. Okay, we'll give it in the description also. Don't worry. Yes, exactly. Ma'am, can't we mention just yeast in the previous question? No, because they asked you for two examples. So you can go ahead and give two. Very good. Many of them are there. So when they talk about alveoli, we know that alveoli are sac-like structures. So you can say that they are sac-like structures or they are balloon-like structures, right? And we know that they are thin-walled, right? So we know that they are thin-walled. As a matter of fact, they are so thin that they are just one single cell thick, right? And this, of course, makes it easy for the diffusion of gases. Now, apart from this, we also see that they are millions in number, right? We don't see that there's not just one large alveoli inside the lungs, right? But rather, we find many, many, as a matter of fact, millions of alveoli within. And why do we find such millions of alveoli which are tiny, thin, uh, thin wall, and richly supplied with blood vessels? So that it increases surface area for exchange of gases, right? So we know that exchange of gases takes place rapidly, which is why in this case, we see that we find millions of them. So when you're writing the answer, these two points must be there, right? Alveoli are thin walled and richly supplied with blood vessels, right? That facilitate the exchange of gases. And we see that there are millions of tiny alveoli that increase total surface area, which thereby maximize the exchange of gases gases. You write these two points, two marks you will get, right? So these are three things you need to write. Whatever I have underlined are your key points, yes? Shubhangi, don't worry, NCRT exemplar, if you have time, try to solve it, it will definitely help you. And all the best, Shika, all the very best, I hope you do well. How to learn bio quickly? So I, like I said, Ankita Ma'am will be taking a class today evening. So don't worry about it. And for those of you who are still struggling with topics in life processes, check out the one shot videos, check out the modular sessions. It is definitely going to help all of you. Ma'am, when question is asked how ATP is formed, when then will the answer be respiration or ADP plus P? It is going to be respiration. So how is it formed as a result of respiration, right? So that is what you need to write. Very good. Now moving on to the next one, which is question number 10. I think we have only two more questions after this, right? So what would be the consequences of a deficiency of hemoglobin in our bodies? Two marks. So here, what should you write? You should write two points. What is hemoglobin and what is its basic function? What will happen if there is deficiency, right? So you need to start off with writing about the function of hemoglobin. Yes, everybody, quickly give me the answer to this. Yes? Hello, Kushbu. Hello, it's a red pigment. Transport of oxygen will get disturbed. Okay. Yes, you, Nila, you can talk to Kriti Ma'am about it. She will definitely help you out. Low oxygen and low supply of blood resulting in weakness, tiredness. Very good. So in this case, we know that hemoglobin is the respiratory pigment which is found in the red blood cells of our body. And we know that hemoglobin is a compound which has high affinity towards oxygen, which is why it facilitates the transport of oxygen, right? So why exactly is red blood cells able to transport oxygen? Because hemoglobin is present. Now, if there is a deficiency of hemoglobin, then it will directly affect the supply of oxygen to the cells of our body. And if that case takes place and a prolonged condition can result in a condition like anemia that results in weakness, tiredness and so on, right? So in this case, as you know, when you are writing the answer for this particular question, hemoglobin is a pigment that transports oxygen to the cells for respiration. Half mark for writing this. Therefore, if there is a deficiency of hemoglobin, it can affect oxygen supply, leading to the deficiency of oxygen to the cells. You'll get a half mark for this, right? And you see that, I mean, you get one mark and one mark here, which leads to a condition called as anemia. This results in tiredness and it also causes um, weight loss as well. But you can just say it causes tiredness and low energy, right? So we see that if there's not enough oxygen, it results in low energy. So half mark here, a total of two marks, right? 
Yes, very good. So are we all clear with this? I hope all of you are clear. Now moving on to question number 11. I am sure that this is everybody's, everybody's more scared of this question. Explain double circulation, describe double circulation in of blood in human beings and why is it necessary? How many of you get scared with looking at double for, uh, circulation, right? Yes, everybody's like ma'am and I see this question, my heart goes. Because how do I do, how do I write double circulation? Diastolic pressure bacha sadam is basically when you have, when during contra relaxation, right? Systolic is contraction, diastolic is relaxation, right? So when there is relaxation, now it could be atrial or ventricular, but when there is relaxation, the pressure that is exerted is what we call as diastolic pressure. Yes, ma'am, time taking diagrams are coming. So see, I can't predict the paper, but normally they'll ask you flowchart. They'll not ask you very complicated ones, right? Explain in flowchart. Yes, you can. I'll not say explain in flowchart, but I'll say you can draw a flowchart to support your answer. Okay, so that is something that you need to do. So first tell me what do we mean by double circulation? How do we define double circulation? Yes. How will we define double circulation? I'll give you the answer, don't worry, right? Okay. When it, uh, when it, I can see some answers. I'm getting the answer for why is it necessary, but I'm looking for the definition of double circulation. When blood travels through the heart twice or when blood passes through the heart twice is what we call as double circulation. Very good, right? So how do we define double circulation? When the blood moves through the heart twice is what we call as double circulation, right? So that is what we understand by this. Now, of course, the next thing is describe double circulation. So how exactly is the blood moving through the heart twice? So you will have to talk about it, right? So here there are two ways. Now, of course, NCRT does not specify about pulmonary systemic. So you can start by saying, right? So first point you can start off now. There are two ways. You can start with how oxygenated blood is pumped from the left ventricle and then you can start from that or you can talk about how deoxygenated blood right from different parts of the body are brought to the right side of the heart so there are two things that you will be able to talk about right so now normally what i prefer or how i write my answer is i start from deoxygenated blood right so here you can talk about how deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body is brought to the vena cava to the right side of the heart and the right atrium receives it now from the right atrium it is then transferred transported to the right ventricle and from the right ventricle it is pumped okay now understand that when you are talking about blood moving from the ventricles always use the word pump okay because we know that the right ventricle and the left ventricle the ventricles basically are the pumping chambers right so you can talk about that so now from the right ventricle, it goes on to th through the pulmonary artery and it reaches the lungs, right? So we see that it reaches the lungs. Now in the lungs, we see that oxygenation takes place and from the lungs through the pulmonary vein, it is transported to the left atrium. Now from the left atrium, it is put to the left ventricle and the left ventricle pumps oxygenated blood to different parts of the body. Now, why is double circulation necessary, right? Why is double circulation necessary? Can you all tell me? Can you all tell me? I'll draw the flowchart also for all of you. This is a very complicated diagram, so I'll draw a simple flowchart. Why is double circulation necessary? Yes, very good. There is separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated. But why is that important? So that it can meet, there is efficient supply of oxygen, very good, right? There is efficient supply of oxygen to different parts and there is no mixing of blood. So when there is no mixing of blood, we see that it becomes effective. 
so quickly once again for all my kids who are very confused right so we know that in the case of the human body we have a four chambered heart right so we have the upper two chambers which are the atrium lower two chambers which are the ventricle and they are separated as right and left side so here we have the right atrium the right ventricle left atrium and left ventricle now when you are using short forms like this and you are drawing the flow chart at the bottom write down what each thing stands for so right atrium here so i will write it on the other side because i need space so this is right atrium this is right ventricle so you need to write this in your exam okay otherwise how will the teacher know i mean even though the teacher will know it is a good practice to have right that you write it in this manner so i'm just writing for right atrium and right ventricle similarly write for left atrium and left ventricle also yes now after this what do you need to draw this is the flow chart you need to have the lungs right and at the bottom you need to draw the body okay now from here of course i am using different colored pens but we know that from the body we have deoxygenated blood right so you can mark here we have deoxygenated blood which is transported from the body to the right atrium with the help of the vena cava and from here we know that it goes to the right ventricle and from the right ventricle we see that it gets pumped to the lungs through the pulmonary artery so labeling your blood vessels are also important now from here of course we see that from the lungs we see that oxygenated blood is transported so in this case we see that oxygenated blood is transported through which vein it is transported through the pulmonary vein right and we see that it then goes on to the left atrium so from here it goes to the left ventricle and this left ventricle will then pump the blood through the aorta to different parts of the body so are we all clear yes i have gone through this once again yes are we clear give me a quick thumbs up on the chat everybody so that we will we are good to go ma'am heart lung heart is pulmonary circulation right yes you forgot valves yes you can mention about valves also i have not mentioned here because ncert doesn't specify valves but like i said right you can mention about valves also but here mainly the circuit is important do you want to take a screenshot of this i'll explain this when i'm doing the pointers also once again you want to take a screenshot bachas take a screenshot and then also give me a thumbs up nephron question is coming our way don't worry is cross ma'am is flow chart enough or should we describe it no you have to describe it and write it point wise support your answer with the flow chart okay so you'll have to support it with flow chart all right and yes yeah, somebody was asking me should we learn the cross section go through all the diagrams because diagram based questions can come right so that is something that you need to go about now of course moving on to the answer here if you see you will get half mark for defining what is double circulation which is nothing but the movement of the blood through the heart twice and we know that it this happens so that it can collect and transport blood to different parts of the body now double circulation starts with how the vena cava brings the deoxygenated blood from different parts and it takes it to the right atrium then right atrium will then pump it to right ventricle right and from their pulmonary artery will transport the deoxygenated blood to the lungs now from the lungs oxygenation takes place and oxygenated blood is then transported from the lungs to the heart through the pulmonary vein now this takes it to the left atrium which then transfers it to the left ventricle left ventricle will pump oxygenated blood through the aorta now last one that is there right so the last one that is there is why is it necessary right what is the reason behind it now we know that the, there is separation of right side and left side which allows highly efficient supply of oxygen to the body cells that is necessary for producing a lot of energy yes all right okay ma'am is flow chart necessary you can definitely do flow chart like you can do the flow chart for supporting your answer 
Is it enough to explain pulmonary and systemic? Yes, that much is enough, but you'll have to elaborate it, right? So that is something that you need to do. Now, I can see a lot of students are telling me, ma'am, please explain this in Hindi. Now, the thing is, of course, he, I it's not, I am comfortable. I'm not, I, I do understand Hindi, but I'm not very comfortable teaching in Hindi. And at the end of the day, when you're writing your exam, right, you will have to write it in English, which is why I am doing this. Ma'am, ROB dikhana hai, agar flowchart ab, I mean, if you are doing the flow chart, then the arrows are very, very important. Direction is important. Okay. Ma'am, explain valves that are there, right? So, valves that are there are nothing but flap-like structures, right? So, they are flap-like structures that prevent backflow of blood. So, this is what we understand as valves. So, are we all clear? What is role of ca capillaries allows for exchange and diffusion of material, right? Yes, very good. Reproduction chapter is going to be there. Don't worry. Somebody is asking me. Okay, I had a very good question. I just want to check on my phone. Ma'am, why is pulmonary artery not called pulmonary vein? See, what is an artery? Artery is any blood vessels that goes away from the heart, okay? That is how you accurately define an artery. Now, and most arteries carry oxygenated blood, but your pulmonary artery is an exception that transports deoxygenated blood. Similarly, what is a vein? A vein is any vessel that transports blood towards the heart, right? And in this case, we see that veins, pulmonary veins here is the only exception that transports oxygenated blood. While most veins that are there are said to be, they transport deoxygenated blood as well. Why do heart attacks occur? Heart attacks would normally occur when, of course, we see that there is clogging in the blood vessels, right? So due to depositions in the blood vessels or there's obstruction or sometimes due to clots, we see that heart attacks can happen, right? Can you show the flow chart? Bacha, I'll not be able to show it now, but you can rewind and watch that part. Mansvi, I've already explained uh, double circulation. You can rewind and watch it once again. Okay. So now, of course, moving to question number 12, very quickly, right? We are going to move on to question number 12. What are the differences between transport of materials in xylem and phloem? It's for three marks. Very, very important question from transport. Yes? Okay. Xylem and phloem. So first, you can do one thing. You can tell me about xylem, okay? And then you tell me three points about phloem. First, you talk about xylem, okay? Everybody's telling me, ma'am, xylem for water, right? That means we know that xylem is necessary for transport of water and minerals, right? Now, what else? What will we write about xylem? Water and minerals, okay. Now, so first is what does it transport? That is what you need to write about. Next is what is the direction of transport? What is the direction of transport in xylem? Very good, I can see. Upward direction, yes. So here you can say it is upward direction or you can say it is unidirectional, right? And you can specify that it is from the roots to the upper parts of the plant. Now, the next one that you need to talk about is how exactly does it happen, right? And I'm already seeing the answers for that. How exactly does it happen? The mechanism per se. What is the mechanism? It is against gravity. Okay, root pressure is involved. Very good. Very good. Normally, we know that as a result of transpirational pull, especially in taller trees, we know that, see, in shorter plants, of course, we know that as a result, it will get transported. But in this case, we know that as a result of transpirational pull, we know that there is a suction force that allows for that water to get transported, right? So, is energy atp involved in this particular process yes or no does it use atp per se for transport of water yes or no is atp getting utilized very quickly no exactly so we see that this does not require any energy so no energy is involved so see when you're doing difference based things these points will come handy for all of you Okay, direction spelling is wrong here. Very sorry about that. Now moving on to phloem. Now let's go ahead, right? How to go about it? Xylem, we know water and minerals, right? What about phloem? 
what do we mean by flow m right what does flow m transport flow m transport food materials yes it transports food materials that are synthesized in the plant now how is it doing it in what direction is it transporting aapko ye pdf zarur milega don't worry about that yes exactly we know that it is both it is bidirectional right so we know transport in flow m is bidirectional which means both upwards as well as downwards because at the end of the day all parts of the plant require food yes all right for those and of course now how is it doing this what about this how is transport of flow m happening exactly translocation right so we know that there is difference in osmotic pressure and due to this difference we know that there is transport i mean we see that there's movement of food into flow m and this particular process requires energy so energy is needed right so what is translocation per se we know that in translocation from the source cell we see that there's difference in concentration and we know that sucrose or the food material that is there needs to move into the cells right now in order to move into the cells and osmotic pressure gets created and we know that atp gets involved right and we know that in this case because atp is necessary we call this process as we call this particular process as translocation right okay ma'am isn't it multi directional see multi directional means basically what's happening it will go like this no up and down right if you want to say multi directional also it's okay but technically is upwards and downwards as simple as that right which is why in this case we see that points of difference three points of difference you need to write for three marks you will score three marks easily right what is osmosis and osmotic see osmotic is a term when it comes to the pressure right so basically what happens is that sometimes due to difference in concentration pressure gets created so that it can move to the other side that's what we call as osmotic pressure okay osmosis is the process of movement so that is what we mean by it so basically exactly passive transport exactly rohit itachi transport is passive but in this case it is active what is the role of water in transport role of trans water in transport is to maintain that osmotic balance right because when food enters it changes the osmotic concentration or the solute concentration per se because what is food at the end of the day what a glucose or sucrose or whatever it is sucrose mainly in this case it is you know food particles it's a solute right now we know that when there is movement of solute we know that there also needs to be a maintenance of the water which is why water is also necessary right so that is what we understand by this three marks easy peasy yes see root pressure is the pressure that is created in the roots right osmotic pressure is the pressure that is created due to difference in water concentration need not be it can it it is there in the roots also it is there in the phloem also it is there in different parts right okay are we all clear yes smiley smile i am not ignoring you the chat is moving very fast in front of me difference between diffusion osmosis diffusion takes place from it is free movement of molecules from higher to lower concentration no involvement of semi permeable membrane while in the case of osmosis there is involvement of semi permeable membrane now moving on to question number 13 yes i think this is the last question which is a four mark question compare the functioning of alveoli in lungs and nephron in kidneys with respect to their structure and function two two marks ma'am if diagram is asked would flow chart suffice for double circulation yes that much is enough right okay yes translocation is how food is transported right avni i hope it is clear ma'am which all substances are uh, everything related to nephron i am going to clarify here once and for all right once and for all i will clarify nephron ka question here root pressure is the pressure of uh, pressure that is built in the roots right again that uh, normally how exactly does transport of absorption of water take place that happens we see that there's a build up of root pressure that happens in the bottom right so that's what we simply understand by it okay seja like i said ma'am which substances are reabsorbed during urine formation i will tell you now okay yes everything i will tell you now so first and foremost for alveoli you all tell me this you know so i will i will go with this very fast right what is the structure of alveoli quickly in the chat right yes arun i will explain don't worry i need you all to quickly tell me structure of alveoli first we have already done this 
balloon like structure very good so you can say balloon like structure or you can say air sac like structure right and we know that they are thin walled yes they are thin walled they are only one single cell thick yes and what else structure also you should talk about they are richly supplied no and we know that they are richly supplied with blood vessels right now next one is function quickly in the chat tell me what is the function of alveoli yes exactly grapes like branch very good yash exactly highly vascularized very good massive amount of gaseous exchange exactly so we see that there is exchange of gases but if you write only exchange of gases only half mark you will get okay so this is this part is two marks so what you will get one mark here for writing structure one mark for function where you can say that there is movement there is exchange of gases where oxygen moves into the blood stream and carbon dioxide moves from the blood stream into the alveoli so that it can be expelled out so you can elaborate it in one sentence okay so that your answer is more clear so this is all about your alveoli now we will come to nephron right nephron mein to i will spend some time now okay so we know that nephron that is there is said to be the structural right so we see that it is said to be the structural and functional unit of the kidneys right and when we talk about the structure of nephron right so when you talk about the structure of nephron we see that they have a tubular structure yes they are made up of tubules mainly right and we know that on one end of it it starts with the bowman's capsule right and this bowman's capsule will have a tuft of uh, capillaries which we call as the glomerulus now from here we see that they have a looped and a convoluted part which we just need to understand as the tubular part and this tubular part ends with the collecting duct right so this is what we understand by it these are the parts that you need to know now what happens is that this glomerulus i told you it is a tuft of capillaries now i'm using a very fancy word which says tuft so tuft is nothing but it's a ball or you can say it's a network of capillaries okay now what happens here is that if it is a network of capillaries we know that blood that has all your unwanted excess water right so we know that there is excess water there will be urea and there will be you know other salts like glucose amino acids so on right all of them is going to be there right so now how does urine formation take place effectively so i'm going to draw this once again right so i'm not going to use any heavy terms for all of you i'm just going to make it simple so we see that there is a difference so the capillary that brings in the blood right so the capillary that brings in the blood has a larger diameter so if you look at the size of the capillary it is larger right and we see that the blood will bring in all these waste materials okay now when it enters into the glomerulus which will look something like this right they are all capillaries and we know that the glomerulus is situated in the bowman's capsule like this right so this right here is your bowman's capsule now this difference in diameter that is there right so this difference in diameter is going to create a certain pressure okay it will create a certain pressure so that all these substances like excess water right we see that urea and some good stuff like glucose and certain other salts they will get filtered out right and this filtration is what we call as glomerular filtration right or we also call it as ultra filtration so basically just like how you have water filter at home that filters out all the unnecessary things right we see that some of this thing would be happening in our body as well so in the bowman's capsule and this right here is your glomerulus right now your filtration has taken place now what has happened you have good stuff as well as bad stuff right now excess water so water has come up but at the same time our body also needs to balance out the total amount of water so sometimes some amount of water needs to be sent back into the body right and we know that glucose is essential so it needs to be sent back and salt also needs to be some amount of salts need to be sent back into the body which effectively means it needs to be reabsorbed right so all the necessary 
or the important things that are needed for our body is what we call as reabsorbed, right? Yes, exactly. It's afferent and efferent arteriole. This is afferent, this is efferent, right? Afferent, efferent arteriole. So now, of course, we see that whatever is necessary is reabsorbed and eventually in the tubular part of it, selective reabsorption, sometimes some secretion of some other substances will take place, right? And with this, of course, what do we understand? We see that urine gets formed and we see that the urine is poured into the collecting duct and different parts of the collecting duct that is or all the collecting ducts from all these millions of new, uh, nephrons will then pour it into the kid, uh, will pour it together and finally the ureter that comes out from the kidney will collect it and take it to the urinary bladder right so are we all clear are we all clear yes this is all that you need to know for your board exams very simple ma'am do each nephron have a separate collect yes each nephron has a separate collecting duct right medulla and cortex are different regions of your kidneys right ma'am can uterus Uterus ka part and all, see I am not touching anything else which is coming from another chapter which Ankita ma'am will already explain, right? And yes, diagram of nephron can come sometimes for exams or learn, it's a very simple diagram, right? Nephron diagram can come, yes. Ma'am, Bauman's capsule spelling is incorrect. Bauman's capsule spelling is correct only. Okay, I would have made a spelling mistake, I am sorry about that, right? So this is the structure, what is the function of nephron now? Can you all tell me, yes? Can you tell me? What do you mean by what is the function of nephron? In the chat very quickly, yes? Produ production of urine, yes. Okay, what happens in the tubular part? We see selective reabsorption, absorption of some important substances take place there. Filtration units, exactly. So they not only filter blood, but they are also responsible for the production of urine, right? So these are the functions. So now when you are writing about it, we see that you can write about the structure, right? So structure, if you write about it, you will get two marks. Two marks for function. So basically one mark for structure of alveoli, one mark for function, one mark for structure of nephron and one mark for its function. Totally you will get four out of four marks easily. Yes? Ma'am, is this sufficient for board exam? See, like I said, you need to practice a lot of questions, but this is for your mainly your revision of your concepts, right? So that is what we need to do. Cardiac notch, see, again, like I said, for all of you who are referring to multiple reference books, one thing I will tell you, your board exam paper is going to be set based on your NCRT. They can give you competency or application based questions, but nothing which is outside NCRT is going to come, right? So that is something that you need to understand very clearly, okay? Are we all clear? Yes, are we all clear? For those of you for whom my screen is blurred, please understand that you need to improve your settings, okay? And for lymphatic system, I'm going to quickly explain this because a lot of you keep asking me about lymphatic system, okay? Now see, this is your capillary, right? So we know that these are your capillaries and let me just draw it with some color. Okay, so these are your capillaries, of course, wherein we know that there is movement of blood and everything, right? Now, in this case, when your capillaries are there, right, there are a lot of leaky channels also. That means that there are ways in which your plasma, right, so normally your plasma and sometimes your WBCs, they can all ooze out of it. There are leaky channels, okay? So, basically, this is for your understanding only. It can leak, okay? So, what will happen when it leaks, no? Leaks all of this will leak outside okay it will out it will leak outside of the blood vessels and outside of the cell right so we see that what it forms it forms something called as the extracellular it is not inside the cell it is outside the cell right so we call this as extracellular fluid now just because it leaks doesn't mean that you just let keep letting things leak our body also has a mechanism in which it will come down or it will enter back inside. 
but some amount of this will get poured into another channel right so all of this will get poured into another channel and this is what we call as lymph vessels right so some amount of this extracellular fluid that gets poured inside the uh, into another channel is what it forms lymph right and then so what is your lymph mainly made up of your plasma your wbc's right and of course we see that it is made up of some other certain salts and everything so this is what we understand as lymph okay so are we all clear with what is lymph and your lymph vessels basically form your lymphatic vessels man if there's absence of lymph or improper working of lymph what would happen so primarily lymph has mainly made up of your wbc's right so it also lymph is necessary because it also serves protection and defense so if your lymph vessels are slowly not functioning properly we also see that it could affect your immunity so that is something that you need to know ma'am lymph capillaries lymph vessels veins that's not the correct path okay capillaries venules veins is the correct path lymph comes in the lymphatic system all together protection against diseases okay ma'am what happens if the blood see blood vessels are in general there are leaks in the blood vessels but our body has mechanisms in which they can work out right okay yes ma'am why can't we see them there are some neurons that you can can see some that you cannot right what is plasma the fluid matrix of the blood okay so with this everybody we are done with life processes it took us about 1 and 1 hour 15 minutes to finish this but how is the josh everybody are you feeling more confident about the chapter life processes yes pa uh, parmat it that is also one among its functions right one of its functions Yes all right see life processes may you guys have the maximum amount of doubt what can i do i was making sure that you are all feeling confident right now again two things do you want a 3 minute break and start at 1250 right we can start at 1250 i'll give you a short teensy break to drink water right i'll also drink water and then we will come back and we will do control coordination yes i am not giving you a long break i'm giving you 3 minute break that's all I'll be here. I'm not going anywhere. I'll take some of your doubts as well. All right, everybody. Three minutes. We will resume at twelve fifty. Okay. This is a quick water break for all of you. So this is a quick water break for everybody. And in the meanwhile, I hope all of you have hit the like button. I see that good number of students are here on the live, and I hope that all of you have showed us your love by liking this video. We should have at least five hundred likes on this video, right? how does transportation of oxygen and water uh, okay what would be the appropriate answer let me have a look once how does transport of water and oxygen uh, i mean oxygen and carbon dioxide take place inside the body will be mentioned about arteries veins or hemoglobin so for transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide you will have to mention on how the red blood cells transport it right so mainly you need to talk about how the arteries will transport mainly the oxygenated blood and once it reaches the cell how diffusion takes place and then how carbon dioxide comes back so you will have to mention arteries and veins hemoglobin will be an added point right yes Okay ma'am uh, does absorption happen twice in nephron reabsorption happens in multiple places not twice but reabsorb mainly you also see that the secretion also sometimes some unwanted substances can be secreted back as well jaya i have answered what is plasma what is glomerulus it is the bundle of capillaries situated in the which is situated inside the this one mm, bowman's capsule right okay how many digestive enzymes in our body and their functions alpha we have already done it bachcha you can check out the life process video respiration once so but i may not be able to go into details of respiration but basically respiration is a breakdown of glucose in order to release energy right so first glucose will get broken down into pyruvate the pyruvate will then get converted if it's aerobic respiration we know that it will completely be broken down to release energy around 38 uh, and energy is released in the form of atp right ma'am will diagram come outside ncrt no it will not come outside ncrt okay Yes, samples in description. Okay, lymphatic system. Like I said, please go check out the video Ankita Ma'am has done. This will definitely help you out. One more minute, and we are going to get started with control coordination. All right, everyone. Okay, let's get started with control and coordination. So, are we all ready? 
Are we ready with control coordination? We will move on because see, we need to wind up the session in at least two, three hours, right? So we need to wind it up as soon as possible. So don't worry, we're gonna have more and more classes to solve all of your doubts, so don't worry, bacha. But one thing I'll tell you is, if you still have doubts and there are parts where you need in-depth explanation, go back to our channel, please, and watch those specific videos. If not, if you want in-depth visualization, please download the Baiju's app as well so that you get proper visualizations right so let's get started with control and coordination uh, ranjit we have some poll questions so can we have the poll please question number one which among the following is a plant hormone we have objective question so is it insulin thyroxine is it estrogen or cytokinin yes yes and that's a very good thing right ma'am which hormones help in digestion Hormones that will help in digestion is, see, there are enzymes that facilitate digestion, right? So you need to understand difference between hormone and enzyme. What is an enzyme? An enzyme is a chemical compound or we say it's a catalyst that accelerates the rate of the reaction, but they don't really get involved in the reaction. But what is the role of a hormone? A hormone is a protein substance which is responsible for transmitting an information, right? So that is the difference. Just give me one moment, everybody. Yes, all right. Very good, everyone. Very good. We're talking about plant hormone here. Now we know that hormones, we have animal hormones and we have plant hormones. Now in this case, insulin, thyroxine and estrogen are said to be animal hormones. But what about cytokinin? Is cytokinin an animal hormone? As a matter of fact, no, it is a plant hormone. So can we wind up the poll, please? Let's close the poll and I can see that most of you have got the answer correctly. Sejal, if gallbladder is removed from our body, then there is of course no storage of bile, right? And if bile is not stored in the body, it can, of course, some of it can move into the, it can move into the small intestine as well, affects the digestion of fats, right? So now let's come to this particular one on, on let's focus on control coordination. So everybody, can you tell me what is the function of cytokinin? very quickly in the chat right because again like i said if gallbladder is not there digestion of fats gets affected all right now what is the function of di um, cytokinin exactly very good it results or it um, improves or increases the rate of cell division and thereby pro contributes to the growth of the plant right very good. Now moving on to the next one, which is a easy peasy one. Gap between two neurons is called as what? Dendrite, synapse, axon or impulse. Can we have the poll please? Cytokinin also, like an additional function is, it also promotes the synthesis of chlorophyll as well, right? So that's also a very important, it is a very, very important uh, hormone that gets produced. Now this is the easiest halwa question. One mark you will get easily. Two neurons is called as what? Dendrite, synapse, axon or impulse. Now these are terminologies which most often than not you guys tend to get confused a little which is why I need you to focus on this, right? And again, like I said, I think for some of you, it would be lunchtime also, right? Some of you must be feeling hungry. Now, for students who are there on the live and you are feeling hungry a little, I wouldn't mind if the live goes running and you eat your lunch, right? It's okay if you want to eat your lunch and pay attention to the live. So that's not a problem. Yes, very good, Himanshu. Very good. I can see the vote is live. Okay. Now we're talking about the gap between two neurons. All right, let's close the poll, please. Very good. So can we have the poll results? Yes, very good. So I can see that 93% of you have got the answer correctly. The correct answer is synapse. Now, the synapse is a junction between what and what? It is a gap between two neurons. But what exactly can you tell me? Gap between dash of one neuron and dash of another neuron. So can you fill up these dashes for me everybody? Can you fill up these blanks? Can we refresh the chat once? 
exactly now i need to know nerve endings okay axonal end very good very proud of all of you for giving me such amazing answers so it will be the axonal end of one neuron and the dendritic end now this is a part where most of you make mistakes which is why i have focused on this they can ask you okay so you can say axonal end and dendritic end as well or axon tip i will not really recommend use endings as the word that's a better term to use okay so some of you were saying dendritic tip axon axonal tip preferably not nerve endings also good you can use nerve endings okay growth of stem elongation of stem per se is of course we see that um, elongation of stem you have gibberellins right cell elongation you have auxin so both of these things now moving on to the next one brain is responsible for what you have one mark for this thinking regulation of heartbeat balancing the body all of the above this should be a very easy one right very easy question for all of you what is the brain responsible for the brain is responsible or a brain is a part of dash nervous system right and what does it do that is what so the next thing that you need to answer is you need to fill in the blank for me here as well could you please briefly tell me functions of plant hormones kalyani i have a question later on which deals with it so i'll explain it then okay because i also value your time a lot which is why i'm trying to make sure that i'm concising the explanations as per the questions very good everybody very good more or less you guys got the answer right okay so in this case we know that the correct answer can we wind up the poll we know that the correct answer here is all of the above right and we know that in this case right we know that the brain is part of the central nervous system yes so it is part of the central nervous system but what is the synaptic junction synaptic junction is the part or it is the junction or the gap between the axonal end and the dendritic end so that is what we we mean by this shivax you've been i mean you've been sending this question quite a lot which is part of the previous chapter but i'm going to address it blood plasma and lymph lymph is mainly made up of plasma you have your wbcs and other salts right but blood plasma is the fluid portion or the fluid matrix of the blood right which consists of certain salts hormones and mainly consists of water so that is what is the difference i hope now we are clear pritam i have already answered your question as well now what is a muscular junction i would say what is a neuromus <coughs> sorry what is a neuromuscular junction that is there right so neuromuscular junction is when the there is an axonal end and there is a muscle right so the gap that exists between a muscle and the axonal end is what we call as the neuromuscular junction so i hope now we are clear with this now with this of course we've had a look at the three questions that are there and of course very simple ones three out of three you all have scored very easily right so sunita i just explain neuromuscular junction you can go ahead and you can check it out interneuron or your association neuron is a type of neuron that is that connects your motor and sensory right okay so now moving on to the next question which is a very simple question what is the function of receptors in our body think of a situation where receptors do not work properly what are the problems that are likely to arise so in this case this will be for two marks okay very simple and easy right what is the function of the receptors yes olfactory lobe is a part of your brain right and mainly it helps you in your smelling right and where is it located it's part of your cerebrum will not be able to get in bone no sudden response okay they receive yes very good so what is the function of the receptors so what are receptors how do we define receptors we see that receptors are specialized cells that have the ability right so we see that that have the ability to perceive 
a stimulus right so they are the ones who are able to perceive or another word if you want to use you can say they can detect the stimulus right they don't respond to stimulus okay understand that they don't respond to a stimulus does a receptor respond to a stimulus or does the effector respond to the stimulus tell me in the chat does a receptor respond to the stimulus or effector respond to the stimulus I think notes to copy try to maintain the decorum of the class please pay attention and if there's a part that you don't understand you can ask me but if you don't ask me then I will not be able to help you with your doubt right so please maintain the decorum these questions are from NCRT yeah they're from NCRT exactly the effector is what responds to the stimulus right but at the same time if you think about the receptor they perceive or they detect the stimulus now of course we have various stimuluses that are there in the body now imagine if a stimulus does not work properly right so if a stimulus does not work properly then we see that we will not be i mean if a receptor does not work properly we will not be able to detect stimuli and of course we may not be able to respond so in some cases where we need to protect ourselves right so if in let's assume that our photoreceptors are not work, working properly or maybe our touch receptors are not working properly then what will happen we see that if like for example our touch receptors are not working and we touch something hot we will not be able to detect it and as a result we may end up damaging or hurting ourselves right so that is something that you need to see let's not take photoreceptors as an example touch receptor is a good example to take right so we see that receptors are present in all parts of our body especially in our sensory parts and we know that they detect signals and they send it to the brain so if receptors are damaged then they will not detect the input which can harm or which wherein we may end up leading or we may end up affecting ourselves right can this example be written in the exam of course you can write it the example i just told you right so when you touch something hot our normal response is to withdraw our hand but if we don't if our touch receptors are not working properly and you touch something hot it can affect ourselves right so that is something that you need to do and Vishnu we will do diagram practice don't worry so you need to write the example as well uh, example as well and you will get two marks for this function of thermoreceptor thermoreceptor is for perceiving or detecting heat right what is epinephrine epinephrine is also your adrenaline which is your emergency hormone what is effectors? So spelling is EFF, right? Effector is basically a organ or a gland that will respond, right? So it will respond, it will give you the response to basically the stimulus that is there. Thigmo is touch, okay? Thigmo is touch receptor, thermo is for heat. So are we clear with the difference between thigmo and uh, thermo? Yes, Satyam, I can definitely I can talk in Hindi, but when I explain it, I can do it in English. That's why I can explain it in English. Explain karti hu, hai? My Hindi explanation is not very good. If you all have been in my class regularly, you all know that, right? Which is why I choose to explain in English. Yes? Okay. List the series of events when bright light enters the eye. Okay, ma'am, is it from human eye or control coordination? It's a mix of two, but mainly from control and coordination. Right? Okay, moving on to the next one. Draw the structure of neuron and explain its function. This is a diagram that can come in your exam, right? So, everybody very quickly, right? All of you tell me the function of the neuron, right? So, in the chat, how do we start? Very good neat structural and functional unit, right? This is the easiest question and this has come in my pre-board. Exactly. So this can come in your pre-board. So how will you go about this is what we need to go. Shivam Bacha, if you please send me your doubt, I will not ignore you. And if I've missed your doubt, I'm sorry. It's, the chat is running very fast, right? So everybody just, in case if I'm ignoring your doubts, it's simply because the chat is moving very fast and I'm trying to read as many questions as possible, okay? So first and foremost, we need to draw. So here, very quickly. Now diagram few rules, okay? Few rules for diagram. First and foremost, make sure that you use a pencil to draw and not a pen to draw, right? And once you are done drawing this, so you can draw a neuron horizontally or vertically, right? But I'm drawing, drawing it here vertically so that at the end of the day, the labeling comes out proper. So you draw this very quickly. Let me just draw this, right? You have to draw a neat and you have to draw a label diagram. 
So here you draw the branches, right? And see, it need not be a very pretty looking diagram. It just needs to convey the message or the intent, right? So draw a neat one. Take your time. Draw the prominent nucleus. Then you draw the myelin sheath. Right? All right. So your neuron is done. Now the next one that you need to draw is the labeling. Now when you are labeling, label everything to one side, preferably to your right side. Why do I do it to the right side? Why am I drawing it? Because it's easy to label. If I do it on this side, then my labeling will not be proper. I miss cytoplasm. Ha, I will do some dots for cytoplasm. Okay? Yes. So in this case, you have dendrite and again label with pencil, which is why I'm using only one color and I'm not using multicolor. You have dendrite. Then you have cell body or cyton. Both are the same. Somebody was asking me, ma'am, is it different? It's not. Cell body is also known as cyton. Then you can label the nucleus like this. Okay, so you have the nucleus. Then here you have the myelin sheath. Then here you can label the axon. And last but not the least, you will have to label the axon terminal. So you can label this as axon terminal, nerve ending, whatever it need to be, right? So here if you notice, one thing is try to make sure the arrows are also aligned, right? So when you're writing about the function, you need to write about. So normally diagrams will come for two marks. If you label all of this, you will get two marks easily. Now what else do you need to write about? We know that... Um, Neuron is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system which plays a key role in the transmission of impulses, right? So we see that communication within the nervous system is possible because of it. So now of course, yes, yes, you can label node of Ranvier also. Yes, you can do that, right? So in this case, you will get two marks here, right? Or you sometimes get one mark. But in case if you have to elaborate, you can elaborate on the structure also, right? So it is a fundamental unit. But I would suggest that you write three points more than enough, right? So we know that it is a basic fundamental unit of the nervous system. And we know that their main function of the neurons is to pass at the receiving information and send appropriate signals to the rest of the body and how do they do it they do it with the help of they do it with the help i mean we see that it's transmitted through electrical impulses Kyoto, what is the purpose of synapse? Synapse is a gap that exists which helps in the transmission of impulse, right? Myelin sheath. Myelin sheath is an insulating sheath which makes sure that the electrical impulse. So just like how you know when you have an electric wire, it has an insulating sheath so that the electricity is not gone. You know that it has an insulating sheath, right? Which is why this also has a myelin sheath, right? So that is what we mean by it. I hope it is clear. What is a neurotransmitter? A neurotransmitter that is there is basically it is a chemical substance right which helps in the transmission of impulse across the synapse right so a neurotransmitter is released from the axonal end so we know that till the axonal end it is in the electrical impulse right but when it reaches here we see that across the synapse we see that some chemicals are released which we call as neurotransmitters and here we see that now the signal becomes a chemical signal, right? And the dendrites will receive this chemical signal and they will generate the electrical impulse once again, right? So that is what we mean by it. Shivam, difference between plasma and uh, blood I have already told you, but uh, you can go and rewind back. Diagram of brain is essential. They will not ask you to draw, but they will ask you to maybe label it, right? So that will come. So you should know the diagram of the brain. Node of Ranvier are points that are there in the axon across which it ensures there is faster transmission of nerve impulse, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am, synap synapse and synaptic cleft. So synapse is the gap, right? A synaptic cleft that is there is basically that junction that's there. Acetylcholine is an example of a neurotransmitter. Yes, glial cells and all, see, you don't need to know for now, so let's stay focused. Moving on to question number six, I'm pacing it up. How does phototropism occur? Three mark question. Chances of this question coming in your long answer is very high, right? It is very, very high. Structure of nephron, I have explained. But you rewind the video, you will find it, right? Synapse is a gap. It is not made up of anything. It is just a gap that exists, right? Somebody is saying, ma'am, oxen. Somebody is saying, ma'am, sunlight. 
Should you write only about oxygen or should you write only about sunlight? What do you think? Or should you write about both? What is your answer? This will determine how much you know, right? Will you write about only one thing? Yes, yes, I will speed it up. Don't worry. Exactly. See, you have to write about both, right? So when you talk about phototropism, you will start by defining what is phototropism. So we know that phototropism is a tropic movement that is seen in plants in response to sunlight. Now here when we talk about it, we have to talk about how phototropism occurs. So we know that phototropism or this movement also occurs due to the production of oxygen. Now we know that oxygen that is there is sensitive to light, right? So we know that oxygen production that is there mainly occurs in the opposite region, right? So it occurs in the opposite direction of where the sunlight is present. And as a result of accumulation of oxygen, we see that there is growth, right? Or we observe that there is growth growth in response to light. Now on the other hand when we talk about it we know that stem that is there shows positive phototropism because at the end of the day we know that it grows in response or in the direction of the stimulus while the root that is there is underground and grows in the opposite direction right which is why in this case we call that as negative phototropism. Should we draw a diagram? You can but it's not necessary right. So that is something that you need to understand. So what is phototropism? It is a directional response. For those of you who are still confused right we see that it is a directional response of a plant that allows the plant to grow towards the direction of the stimulus or in some cases like the roots away from the light so now we know that how exactly does it happen so we know shoot tips and leaf tips produce an hormone called as oxygen and we see that normally oxygen that is there will diffuse away from the light source right which contributes to the growth of the plant towards the light source so basically if you think about it right we see that in this case if this is the plant right and these are the cells oxygen is diffused in this direction contributing to cell elongation such that it will Will grow. Some of you are saying, ma'am, I have doubt. Some of you are confused. How many of you are confused with this, right? How many of you are still confused with this? Will they ask to explain the activity? Chances are they can ask you, um, they can ask you an activity based question. Okay, I can see a lot of you are confused. So some of you are clear, but for our other friends who are still confused, let me explain this, okay? Now, our, let me start with the basics, okay? So, when you talk about tropic movement, right? Tropic movements are those movements which are growth related, right? So, we see that these are growth related movements and we see that here it happens in response to a certain stimulus. Now, stimulus here could be light or it could be, you know, it could be touch in some cases, it could be water in some cases, right? It is a growth related movement, right? Now, we see that here the direction of movement is very, very important, alright? So, direction is important. Now, we are talking about something called as phototropism, alright? So, now what do we mean by phototropism? Now, photo here means light, alright? So, photo here means light. And when we talk about light here, right? So, we see here that we know that that means the stimulus is light. And tropism is tropic movement. That means it is growth related. So, simply phototropism can be defined as the directional or growth related movement in response to light, right? Are we all clear so far? Are we all clear? Can you give me a thumbs up for all the people who are confused? Are we all clear? I need a quick thumbs up in the chat. Yes? So far clear? I am stopping and teaching so that you will not tell me ma'am I am still confused. Okay. Now what happens is that the reason why we see. Now what happens is that normally what we observe is that the stem grows in the direction of light. Okay. So if it's an indoor plant, we see that there will be bending and everything towards the light. Alright. Now because it is growing in the direction of light, we say that there is positive phototropism. 
all right so we see that there is four positive phototropism while on the other hand if you talk about the roots we see that they are growing in the opposite direction right so this is what we call as negative phototropism because it is going in the opposite direction now our next question is why is this bending happening why is it that if i keep an indoor plant why does it bend towards the light what is the reason why does this happen that is because of a hormone called as auxin so auxin that is there right so we know that auxin that is there is a phytohormone but in this case right we see that it is sensitive okay so we see that this here is sensitive to light so basically when this bending happens it's because the cells that are there no they will release auxin but they will diffuse in the opposite direction so ulta it will go this way and because auxin is accumulating we see that this will result in growth so normally what do we assume if you are building blocks you will put one on top of the other and that's what we call as growth but actually niche se it is adding more and more so that it grows more so are we all clear yes it's a shady party exactly it loves the shade right it's found on the shady side are we clear yes is it a growth movement yes sankush bachcha sunflowers may it is not technically phototropism it's a special kind called as heliotropism but in this case it is growth related as well now are we all clear heredity will start in some time yes i have done very slowly if you still have doubts please go ahead and check the one shot video it will definitely help you out auxin concentrates on the opposite shady side very good yes so now of course with this we will move on to the next one right i have lost track of the questions but nonetheless which signals will get disrupted in the case of spinal cord injury two mark question easy peasy which one is going to get affected for all of you on understanding how to learn um hormones make a table or column where you have hormone where it's produced what is its function table or column is the best right Nerve impulses, but specifically which action, right? Very good, everybody. Very good. So we know that the spinal cord that is there is part of the. It is part of the um, central nervous system, right? And we know that when it's part of the central nervous system, the spinal cord's main function is how it contributes to reflex actions, right? Now, because it contributes to reflex action and it controls most reflexes below the neck. I mean, from neck below, we see that if there's a spinal cord injury, we see that transmission. So there are two things. Okay, first and foremost we see that transmission of impulses from the brain to the lower body will get affected right so we see that first and foremost so for people who have spinal cord injury we see that they will not be able to move their lower body or they may not be able to feel um, they will not be able to feel the senses and along with that reflex actions can also get affected which is why two things you will have to write here right so it's part of the central nervous system which is responsible for reflex action and we also see that impulses towards various body parts from the brain will not be communicated so one example is again when you touch a hot object right you can go back to that it can lead to paralysis as well exactly so it can lead to paralysis also right where our body is not able to have any sensation neck below so in this case right so we know that again the same example i gave you if you touch something hot and if your spinal cord is not working you will not withdraw it and at the end of the day it will get damaged what if your vertebral column gets uh, damaged see if your vertebral column gets damaged your posture will be affected right you will be bedridden but still your sensations right whether it's touch whether it's heat you will be able to feel it right so basically what happens you a person who is bedridden may not be able to move but he'll be able to move his arms with minimal in, uh, with minimal movement right and he'll be able to touch but if spinal cord gets affected then the sensation goes so are we clear are we all clear right is board 2023 going to be hard if you don't study it is going to be hard that is what you have to understand but if you study it is going to be easy okay now moving on ma'am is it necessary to write definition uh, write example in every definition it will elevate your answer if you write an example right ma'am i can't understand this question see 
basically they're saying if your spinal cord right if this is your spinal cord and if your spinal cord gets damaged right or it gets injured such that your spinal cord no longer functions properly right it no longer functions properly then what is going to happen now basically what is the function of spinal cord it allows for the transmission of impulses from brain to other parts of the body right and it also contributes to reflex action so basically if this gets damaged we see that these two things will get affected so i hope all of you are clear with this yes are we clear ma'am can you give me a list of important diagrams sujal i have already done this please go check out the videos i'll pin it in the comments of this video as well definition of reflex arc reflex arc is the shortest route taken by the impulse from receptor to effector moving on to question number 8 question, question number 8 i think scares everybody how does chemical coordination take place in plants you have three marks for this particular question how many of you are scared of this ma'am nahi hoga this question this is not my cup of tea this is the phytohormone question which all of you were crying about so i'll explain phytohormones here right shorya singami ankita ma'am will explain don't worry okay with the help of hormones okay <laughs> see that is one mark question three marks if you have to write if you say ma'am hormones is not going to happen right see when they say chemical coordination okay if the question see now most of you are also telling me ma'am these questions have come in our pre board that means chances of these kind of question coming in your exams are also higher so solving your ncert exercise is very important so whenever the word chemical comes into the picture always understand that we are talking about hormones so chemical coordination in humans chemical coordination in plants it is all with respect to hormones right now you need to start with understanding that chemical coordination in plants is done with the help of plant hormones or phytohormones now we see that their site of production and where they act upon is going to be different navin thank you so much but kindly don't spam like let's stay focused on what we are learning about right so let's understand about all of these hormones now as per if you look at your ncrt hormones you need to learn about are auxin gibberellin cytokinin okay and then they'll tell you a little bit about abscisic acid also ethylene is not there in your exam so when you write about it we know that auxins that are there are hormones which are produced in shoot tips and they are found in young leaves right now here we see that you need to know one function one to two functions is enough so what does auxin do it helps with cell elongation right so understand i am saying cell elongation that means it acts on each and every cell right and it facilitates the elongation of the cell so it facilitates growth by cell elongation right so that is what auxin does now next up you have gibberellins okay now along i mean going back to auxin auxin not only allow cell elongation it delays aging okay so we see that this delays aging as well so senescence is what we understand as aging sankalp why you unnecessarily spamming bachcha please stay focused right now of course moving on to the next one right which is gibberellins which are again produced in the buds and they are produced in the roots what do they do they mainly help in cell and i mean they uh, help in stem elongation understand the difference okay one is cell elongation and the other one is stem elongation see if you are not able to understand ask me rather than spreading hate okay so i always tell you it's not an easy thing what we're doing but kindly don't spread negative comments in the chat but are we clear so far yes are you all clear give me a thumbs up because you are asking me yes yeah, students are distracting don't pay attention to them right pay attention to what i am saying okay can we scroll down the chat no no it's okay just scroll it down now 
All right, you're clear. No, yes, we will do activity sessions. Don't worry. Yes. So now moving on, we have cytokinins. Yes. Now the cytokinins that are there are mainly pre-produced in the roots. And like I said, they allow or promote growth by cell division. And they also produce or help in chlorophyll synthesis. Right. So how to write functions? So do we have to write functions? You can mention one or two functions because they've asked how, do, how does chemical coordination take place? Right. So that is what they are saying. How does chemical comp how does chemical coordination take place various hormones are produced that contributes to all of these things right so that is what i'm trying to explain and then you have abscisic acid which is also called as the stress hormone right and we know that the stress hormone is normally produced in emergency situations right so we see that they are normally produced in emergency situations that promotes aging and also promotes for senescence and accelerates aging basically right how to write the answer huge answer you will have to write three to four marks you will have to elaborate four hormones calf function yes four uh, options you will have to write omr sheet see it's not mcq alone you have subjective you'll get the booklet okay are we clear ma'am if it comes for five marks you have to write one one function okay what does auxin do what does cytokinin do what does uh Gibralin do and like I said in these cases this is where you will have to write what could be an emergency situation sometimes if there's not enough water or if there's not enough food available or nutrients available then we see that it has to make sure that it conserves whatever emergency that is there right is say five marks ka nahi aega nahi aega but agar aega to aapko likna you should know right yes all right ma'am gibralins I can't understand see what does gibralins do Gibralins allows for the elongation. So if I have a stem which looks like this and I put gibralins, then my stem will elongate as a whole, right? Now what will it do? Along with this, we also see that if there are seeds which are present, gibralin will act on this and it will break seed dormancy. So if the seed is not germinating, okay, I want my seed to germinate, but it is not germinating, then we see that I can add some gibberellin so that the dormancy phase where it is not germinating, it will germinate. Are we clear? Yes? Okay. Or please go slowly. ठीक है आप सब लोग बता रहे हैं कि मैम आप जल्दी जल्दी करो थोड़ा लोग बोल रहे हैं मैम स्लो कर दो तो आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड माय बैलेंस इन बिटवीन अब आप सबको समझ में आ गया है ये सब यस आर वी ऑल क्लियर blood group chances of it coming are very simple i mean very less but it's okay don't worry about it ma'am cell differentiation is same as cell elongation no cell elongation elongate look at the meaning it means to stretch differentiate that means it will change its function cell differentiation is different what is cytokinin cytokinin is an enzyme i mean it's a hormone that acts and allows cell division so more and more cells will be produced if cytokinin is there yes very good all right now moving on to the next one what is the need for a system of control and coordination in an organism three marks three to four marks you will get how many of you have got this exam in your pre-boards how many of you got this question in your pre-boards right ma'am a short explanation on gibralin aisha i've already explained bacha can you please go ahead and um, rewind it Ma'am, what if we write short answers? Good, write short answers, right? Write short answers and to the point. Some of you are like, ma'am, we have not got this question. Okay, some of you have got it. Not a problem. See, you have five chapters for NCRT solutions and a lot of doubts in as well. So we are trying to balance everything out. I can go super fast and not take doubts only. But at the same time, then there would be no point of the session, right? So I'm going a little slowly. There is no chapter wise weightage. You can only assume that, you know, a uh, question wise weightage is something that CBSE gives you, right? But you have important chapters like life process, heredity and how do organisms. From this, you can get a good amount of questions. But of course, you never know, right? Exactly. Okay. 
So now when you talk about control and coordination, right, or when we talk about why control and coordination is necessary, we need to not only coordinate internally. So we as organisms, especially complex multicellular organisms, have various processes that are constantly happening within the body, right? And because so many processes are happening, they all need to work together. But at the same time, we also need to coordinate with our surroundings, which is why there is a need for having a nervous system and there is a need for having a uh, for having a there is a need for having a uh, um, endocrine system as well right so the nervous system is responsible for controlling and coordinating various activities and endocrine system is necessary for regulating proper growth and development and we know that with the help of nervous system we are able to coordinate and respond to our surroundings and carry out our day-to-day -day activities while in the case of our in endocrine system it regulates the day-to-day -day chemical processes that takes place you write four points you will get four marks are we all clear Yes? Are we all clear? You will get it, bacha. Don't worry. We will also pin it to this particular video as well. Ma'am, are all hormones present in all cells of plants? No, there are certain parts of the plant that secrete the hormones which are then transported to the other cells, right? So I hope now we are clear with this particular question. Very good. Now let's move on to the next one, right? Let's move on to the next one. How are, and I'm sure that this is a doubt that a lot of you have, right? How are involuntary actions and reflex actions different from one another? Two marks. Involuntary action and reflex action. Yes. Law of segregation. See, I am not touching all this heredity. Ankita ma'am will come and teach you all of this. I have, I will teach you everything related to life process and control and coordination, right? CBSC sample paper already solved in the channel. Shivex, you can check that out. CBSC practice paper already so solved in our channel. You can check it out. Ma'am didn't understand. Repeat please. Nilsha, is this this particular question or the previous question? Involuntary actions can be controlled by the brain. Ha! See, everybody telling me, ma'am, brain has nothing to do with reflex action. So for everyone who has been very regular to my class, I always tell you that you need to pay attention to the fact that reflex action, neck below, is primarily controlled by your nervous, I mean, your spinal cord. That doesn't mean that brain has nothing to do with reflex action. Brain is also involved. Even if spinal cord is taking the decision, the message is passed to the brain. Okay. So always the central nervous system is involved in a reflex action, just that depending on what the reflex has to be, right? So involuntary actions are those actions which are not in our control right and we know that they can be slow as well but here these are very quick and immediate right now here mainly these are controlled by the brain but here it could be the brain or the spinal cord right can you give me some examples as well can you all give me an example reflex action is normally towards a danger okay yeah brain tends to keep a memory Yes, Nisha, I'll explain the previous question, don't worry. Heartbeat, exactly. So, heartbeat or movement of food down the elementary canal, that is peristalsis. They are all examples of the same. But when you write reflex action, you can write about, you know, how we tend to blink our eyes faster when something goes inside. Or when you touch a hot object, you go ahead and you, you know, withdraw your hand. That is what we mean by it, right? So involuntary actions take place with the without the conscious choice, but they are normally controlled by the medulla of the they are controlled by midbrain or the medulla, right? While on the other hand, reflex action is a quick and immediate action controlled by either brain or spinal cord. So these are the points that you will have to write and provide with an example. If it comes for two marks, preferably comes for two marks or sometimes four marks as well, right? Yes, ha ha, strict se check hoti hai board ka paper. Now next one was Nisha. I am going to do the previous question once again in a different manner. Compare and contrast the nervous and hormonal mechanism for control and coordination in plants, right? Ma'am, what about movement of pupil? So movement of pupil to adjust the amount of light is also... It's somewhere, it's actually somewhere in between. It, I'll not call it a reflex action, right? Because movement of pupil, normally in light places, you tend to adjust. 
but when you go from a dark room to a light room right that adaptation that takes place is said to be more or less a reflex right you closely close your eyes like this and then you do this that is said to be a reflex but normal movement of pupil in order to adjust to the amount of light that is there is said to be an involuntary one yes okay why do our eyes shut when there is sudden light same reason because we need to you cannot have too much of light that enters also, right? So we need to make sure that we adapt to our surroundings. Why females vomit? Ah, all that you ask, Ankita ma'am, okay? Uh, reproduction, I am not touching. Yes, exactly. So now when you talk about nervous mechanism, we know that mainly in nervous mechanism, you have nerve impulses, right? So why do we have a nervous system? We know that nervous system is mainly there so that it helps us control and we are able to coordinate with our surroundings, right? So we are able to control and coordinate with our surroundings. Now, how is the, how does the nervous system function? It functions with the help of, or we see that nerve impulses are involved, where there is rapid flow of information and the response time is very quick, right? So it's super quick. And we see that it's not very specific in action, like in the sense that this impulse will do this only, right? But at the other hand, when you talk about endocrine system right so when we talk about endocrine system or when we talk about hormonal system yes we see that they mainly are necessary for coordinating various activities internally as well as externally and we see that they release hormones and we know that normally we see that the information flow is slow right i would say slow transfer of information response time can take longer when compared to your nervous system and they are specific in action how more long see the session we have five chapters but it will take a little more longer so don't worry about it okay and i think this is going to be the last question i guess i guess after this there's no question let me just go ha huh, yes this is the last question and then ankita ma'am will come and take the rest can you explain in hindi my hindi is not very good so i'm going to stick to english okay who has written answers team has written answers what is the difference between the manner in which movement takes place in a sensitive plant and movement in our legs last question in control and coordination movement in plants sensitive plant like touch me not and movement in our legs quickly yes what is feedback mechanism Naveen to simply put it a feedback mechanism is a mechanism that is set in place to regulate how much hormones are produced so if there's too much of it there's a mechanism wherein the hormone level will be balanced right or the reaction will be balanced or if there's too less of it we see that how much more can be there right yes yes mimosa pudica but I also see that some of you are thinking about the answer so to wind it up very quickly, exactly, one is involuntary, not involuntary, but rather I would say that it is in response to something, right? So mainly there it will be a voluntary action that is there. Now the movement of sensitive response, so mainly in plants if you think about it, there's no specialized receptor or anything per se, but there is a stimulus and we know that we know that mainly there is movement of water, the turgidity and flaccidity of cells what actually results in the opening and closing closing right but at the same time when you talk about movement of our legs it's a voluntary action which is controlled by the nervous system that sends the impulse right and we know that here there is contraction and relaxation so in one case we see that movement is in response to stimulus while here it is actually a voluntary action and now of course we know that there is no special tissue involved in this case and it's mainly due to movement of water molecules right and in this case we see that there is specialized tissue involved there is impulse which is involved and of course contraction and relaxation of muscles is what effectively involves it right so in plant a stimulus is necessary while for leg movement it is not necessary right so honey i'm not sure of the answer which is why i'm not answering that question right okay camera angle is not good we can't do anything about that sorry all right everyone 
so with that i am done with life processes and control and coordination right so this right here i hope all of you are clear sphincter muscle i have already answered right so sphincter muscles are circular muscles which open and close what is hypothalamus it is the control or we see that it mainly it is responsible for controlling the functioning of the pituitary gland okay sophia hello yes life process is done it was the first chapter done right so now of course i will be handing it over to ankita ma'am for the next three chapters over to you ma'am yes ma'am but everyone i think um, we can take a break so we'll meet at 2 so everyone hello hello everyone good afternoon so i think you did amazingly well so let me tell you everyone the three last chapters are not that important matlab they are important definitely from the exam point of view but the two chapters that ashwara ma'am did with you guys are really really very important life process and control and coordination so please make sure if you are joining us right now few minutes back please make sure you go and watch those part again i know each of you want a break and it's a right time for us to have a break also so everyone will take a break we'll meet at 2 right it's a break time now yes it's a break time and i think we'll meet at 2 pm so our class will start at 2 so we have a good amount of 20 minutes break so please make sure right take a break it's really important right because you all are sitting for a very long time for almost 2 hours continuously so now you should have a break of 20 minutes and then we'll continue the rest three chapters we'll be back i know many of you are saying no but i think it's really important now yes so that you will be refreshed and we can quickly finish see the other three chapters will do it in just one hour so i need that energy when you come back i need that energy in you okay yes we will be discussing all of that the doubts that you have yes so take a break have your lunch and we'll meet at 2 bye bye everyone
Hello everyone, good afternoon, good afternoon. Yes. Hello everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it's 2-2. Two, two. two minutes late. I saw, I came to the, I came to the class, right? I was here. But I thought that, okay. Very few of there, a uh, few of you were there in the class. Now we have so many of you. Welcome to the class, everyone. How's the Josh? Yes, awesome everyone. Right, so I hope that all of you are ready. See again, as I said earlier, also we will not be taking much of your time, right? We understand it's a very, very crucial time for all of you. Many of you will have your board exam, sorry, pre-board examination tomorrow or maybe in this week. Or maybe you all are studying really, very hard everyone. So, we'll be quickly starting with a chapter which is how do organism reproduce, right? Two chapters are done. So we are done with the life process chapter and control and coordination. Now very quickly everyone, we will be taking a look at the chapter which is how do organism reproduce. Ha, I have board ki copy check ki hai. Yes, Tanish, I have likes. Dekhe. Everyone, let's have 100, sorry, 600 likes. Ha, spammers will delete karenge, bilkul. See everyone, let's just stay focused. See, your time is very, very precious to you and to us. I don't know how many of you feel that your time is precious to you, but we definitely feel that way. And we really want all of you to be very, very focused. Right? So, hello everyone. Good afternoon to each one of you. Yes, and I really want all of you to stay focused, right? We will be starting with a very easy chapter, which is how do organisms reproduce, okay? Now, uh, Dave, that portion is already done by Ashwarya ma'am, right? And uh, you can quickly, if you want to see it now, you can go back into the session and can see. Rewind karke. If you can wait some time, once this class is done, you can see at that time also. Okay, bhadiya. So everyone, we have the first question over here. It's a MCQ question. Very good, everyone. Very good. Let's just stay focused. Okay, asexual reproduction takes place through budding in. Now, I really want to do go ahead with the polls. But yeah, I think we have a time crunch over here. So I really want all of you to make sure to quickly vote for the answer and write over here. Jaldi say, write your answer over here. Asexual reproduction take place through budding in amongst which of, which of the yeast? Plasmodium and Leishmania, easy peasy, right? Yes, the correct answer over here is yeast. In amoeba, what we see? We see the binary, right? We see the binary fission. Then in plasmodium, we see multiple fission, right? And of course, in Leishmania, again, we see the binary fission. Very good, everyone. So here, here is a definition for all of us to remember. That formation of a bud or outgrowth of the, uh, you know, outgrowth of or the development. We have a growth of the bud and eventually that bud will develop into a new individual. Very good, very good. So everyone, are we clear with this question? Right, I know that this was an easy question, that's why. We'll move really very quickly and one of the important thing I want you to take note of that that you know in the examination they can ask you to draw or maybe a question can come where they will be asking you to identify what is happening in this figure. So we here right we can see what we have we have the budding in east. So all the images that you have in your textbooks are really very important especially for the chapter how do organism reproduce right. In others, they will be able to, uh, you know, ask you question based upon identify this part, which the other parts, right? But in how do organisms reproduce, it's easy for us to understand the diagrams and then find the answer for it. Very good. Yes, this is easy to draw also. Naveen, it's very easy. Don't worry. You can watch our previous session where we have gone, like we have one shot, right? Everyone, let's take a look at the next question. Yes, Akansha, uh, Ashwari Ma'am just discussed few minutes back about the control and coordination. Please go and watch that session, uh, that part, right? In Hydra also we have the budding. Very good. Yeah, I will be, we will be sharing the PDF on the Telegram. Bhadiya. Mere question padne se pehle all of you should answer. You are actually helping us to move a little bit faster. Which of the following is not a part of the female reproductive system? So we have the four options. We have ovary, which definitely is a part of the female reproductive system. Ovum or the eggs are produced inside the ovaries. Uterus is a place, of course, where we'll see 
after the fertilization the implantation of the zygote right sorry uh, of the embryo and it will be developing there then we have the fallopian tube fallopian tube is where of course the fertilization takes place right and vas deferens is a part of the male reproductive system it carries the sperms from the testis epididymis right from the epididymis to the to the urethra very good and to the glands also so we here we have we have discussed about this so very good everyone easy peasy now let's move ahead to the next part right awesome are to zyada hi spamming ho gayi i know that you feel like giving the answer but everyone yes awesome now let's take a look at the next question ha bilkul ma'am five marks ke question is ha bilkul aa sakte hain we will discuss about that we'll have a lot of breaks in between in that particular thing okay the answer contains what everyone easy peasy see we have been learning about the flowers since class 6 getting to know plants so just i think in all the subjects if we learn the basics our life is sorted so over here we have the example clear example of it right answer contains what sepals ovules pistil and the pollen grain so we know the answer right stamen right it has two important parts anther and the filament right and anther is where we'll see the production of the pollen grains pollen grains right over here they are the male gametes very good very good so over here we have the answer everyone sepals are of course definitely not so essential part of the flower ovule right where of course the pollen grains uh, sorry the male gametes will go and we'll see the fertilization process there and the pistil the female reproductive part including the stigma style ovary and ovule very good yes meena uh, we'll discuss about that when we have the question tanishk ha ah, time machine yes you can write your answers by me in, in your own words meena we will discuss about that once we are there at that particular part of the question here we go what are the advantages of sexual and asexual reproduction everyone easy see i think many of you are asking about this right so see we have two types of reproduction asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction right sexual reproduction we know that what we have sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction two parents yes i'm sure you remember this over here we just have one single parent gametes are formed gametes are formed right and of course over here we have no gametes and we will see variation here very good very good and over here no variation <clears throat> see it's very easy nahi nahi chirayu you will not get that question you will not yes very good very so it's, it's very easy right bahut hi easy question hai i i hope that all of you got right the answer in sexual reproduction definitely we have involvement of the two parents gametes are involved and we will see the variation whereas in the asexual reproduction we'll have just one single parent no gametes are formed and definitely we'll see no variation <coughs> good right isolated parents can reproduce an asexual reproduction yeah single parent very good very good we don't have genetic drift navin in the syllabus so we will not be discussing now very good okay so here we go everyone you can frame your answer see again see these answer that we have over here don't focus over here much right you have understood the concept now you're clear what was the difference between so we here please make a table first of all please do make a table that's really very important in any of the difference question make a table write asexual reproduction sexual reproduction write all the points and please make sure to write an example how many of you remember this examples will give you half marks in the examination i'm telling you everyone many of you are asking right ma'am aapne board paper check kiye strict hota hai kaise hota hai the checking is really very easy and you have special marks not special marks marking scheme mein examples ko half marks you will get so please make sure whenever you are writing about any of the differences 
be it in terms of enzymes, etc, etc. Please make sure to write the examples. Are we clear? Very good. We don't have meiosis and mitosis, so Aisha will not be going there. If you want to study the detail we have done in a previous session, you can watch those sessions. Yes, very good. Very good. Shooting star, again, I'm speaking in English fully here and there. My Hindi will come out. Right? But I'm not teaching in Hindi. Difference, ma'am, this is not a difference question. TV channel, I know that, but this question can come in the examination for difference. So that's why I'm telling for that. Very good. Basal metabolism, you are going way ahead of your syllabus, so let's just focus on the syllabus. Variation as a male has very good, very good Tanish. Yes, we'll see the variation over here. Okay, everyone, let's take a look at the next question. What are the functions performed by the testes in the human beings? Easy question. See over here, it's a two marks question. It's a very straightforward question, right? The question is, what is the function of testes? If we have to put it a simple way, what is the function of the testes in the human beings? We know the answer. Yes, right? Halwa question, Anna. It's a very easy question. Testes, we know that they are the important primary sex organ in the males. They actually help in the production of sperms. Absolutely correct. They help in the production of sperms. And they produce this testosterone hormone also. Which actually help us in, uh, in males. Actually, it's a uh, hormone that actually help them in having the secondary sexual characteristic features. Easy peasy. Right, so everyone over here. Yes, so we have testes are responsible for making sperms and are also involved in the for producing the hormone which is testosterone. Easy answer everyone. Just one single sentence and we are sorted. This came in your pre-board examination. Very good Maheshwari. Nice. Good. So here we can write the function easy. Right. And of course the next question that can come in your examination is that why the testes is present outside the human body. Can you tell me why, right, why the uh, testes are present outside the human body? Yes. Very good, very good everyone. Temperature, yes, the temperature plays a very, very important, it's a very important uh, thing for all of us to remember that the scrotum actually uh, provides the optimum temperature for the sperm production. That's why the testes is present outside the body, okay? So we hear this is a next type of question that can come in your examination right so we here we have two functions first help in the production of sperm product or sperm second helping in the testosterone production two marks question two functions okay here this is an extra question now let's take a look at the next question bilkul Assertion and reason bhi humne karwaye hain and of course we'll be doing it in the future also please subscribe to the channel and be regular Naveen, we will be discussing when we have the questions, right, which are related to, to diagram. We will definitely will be discussing. Right. Okay, everyone. I can see the answers already. Uh, yes, Tanishk, then Astatin, Neat, Abhinav, Shooting Star. We'll discuss that later, but it, that's not a part of your syllabus. So we'll not be paying much attention to that. Very good, everyone, for giving us the correct answer. Why does menstruation occur? So, of course, we know that it's a very important process that occurs in the female body, right? If the egg is not fertilized. So, we know that every month, right, ovary releases an egg, right? I'm sure you know this. Just telling you in a very short. So, every month, ovary will release an egg. That egg will go into the fallopian tube and it will wait in the fallopian tube for some time. If the sperms comes and the fertilization occurs, which is nothing but the fusion of sperm and the ova, right? And of course, we'll have the formation of zygote. If the fertilization is happening, the zygote formation will occur. If there's no sperm in the female reproductive system, the egg will start moving towards the uterus, okay? Meanwhile, the uterus prepare itself, right? The uterus prepare, pre prepare itself for the growth, right? To provide the nourishment to the growing embryo. So what will happen? They have thick lining of the blood. If fertilization occurs, definitely they will, will, uh, they will be contributing, providing the nourishment. If there is no fertilization, what will happen? After a certain days, what we will see is that 
along with the egg right we uh, in the female body we'll see the contraction happening and with the contraction and the relaxation these blood lining along with the mucus and along with the egg will be removed from the female's body okay yes easy answer see the question is really very simple very good yes the lining will be getting removed awesome the lining of the uterus will shed yes syngamy matlab fertilization aditya we usually use the word syngamy in the flower reproduction wait for some time very good very good here we go so this is how you can write the answer everyone you can mention you can go into the detail and can write in points it's a three marks question right it's a three marks question uh and you can write all of those points so of course every month the well, female produces is, is an egg lining of the uterus become thick to receive more blood vessels to provide the nourishment to the embryo if the egg is not fertilized the thickening is not required thus we'll see the shedding or the breaking of it along with the blood and the mucus and every month the fertilization occurs so we call this whole process as the menstruation right this is a very easy way to write the answer yes niyaz you have to wait for some time we will be discussing about heredity then we'll discuss those of you who have question from the chapter control and coordination and life process i'm really sorry to say that i'll not be able to answer them now you can go back right rewind it a little bit get it cleared as sure as i'm just did it right aditya please don't spam i have explained to you what a syngamy is awesome right awesome everyone so are we clear yes so this is a three marks question please do remember how many marks you have and how much how much you have to write no we will not be able to see the ovum with our naked eyes it's a still and small egg it's a smell it's a cell only it's a very small very good that's very good tanish keep on doing that i know there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, you who are you know trying to distract us but everyone it's a humble request to you it's a very crucial time for all the students who are here for our serious studies so i want it's a humble request to all of you who are distracting or who are spamming please you can leave the class right please leave the class if you don't want to study with us it's absolutely fine see we don't hold grudges right <laughs> so please don't feel bad please do not distract or spam or disturb my bachas i don't want you if you want to create a chaos in my class you can leave don't worry i'll not feel bad i'll smile <laughs> okay yes everyone let's move ahead and let's take a look at the next question here we have the next question yes here we have the next question draw a label diagram of the longitudinal section of a flower right it's a very very easy question now you we just have to draw the longitudinal section of the flower see if we had ashwara ma'am in the class ma'am would have drawn it my drawing is not not good so we'll write directly move over here yes yes the flower is tough but don't worry it will not come in your examination luckily uh, of lately we have been seeing that cbsc have made a uh, attempt to help the students right and they are not asking you to draw the diagram per se together right so what we have over here is a beautiful diagram right so we have the petals androsium gynosium and sepals kaju kadli question right i remember it easy peasy question uh dna replicating bachcha we don't have it in our class right in class 10th pgr i'm not sure what you're asking sk shorts if you are in full form hopefully it's a part of our syllabus Yes diagrams will come i'm not saying that diagrams will not come diagrams will come in your examination but chances are there that maybe they can give you a diagram based question we have to look at the diagram and then we have to write the answer or we have to identify it write its function etc etc very good yes sk short ashwara ma'am just did that Yes, Gurminder, as well as I am doing the control and coordination, you can go back and watch it. Yes, very good, very good, everyone. Yes, ma'am, it can. Yes, absolutely, very good, everyone. So I hope that it's clear. Awesome, awesome. Just in case it comes, you know, we are also telling you what diagrams are important from the exam point of view. 
so there's a diagram in your textbook which talks about the double fertilization right yes i'm sure you would have seen that there's a diagram of the stigma we have a pollen tube in between right and of course we have the ovules and the ovary i'm sure you would have seen the diagram that diagram can come in your examination to draw okay it's a very simple diagram diagram of stromata can come in the examination right yes what is a calyx so we have calyx corolla and rosium and uh, the gynosium so calyx over here the another beautiful word for the calyx is sepal the easier word okay suryavir i have answered your question the other word of course over here is a sepal and the, these are the small green color small leaf like structure not exactly leaf like structure a small bud that we have right it actually provides a protection yes the uh, that is a different other name for the petals beautiful petals very good very good how many points we should write for three marks three three points and if definitely if you have any example please write the example also okay yes ma'am why there are two pollen because these are the two gametes okay the pollen grain that we have of course you'll be learning in your higher classes that in a pollen grain right we have two gametes that is a thing that we'll be learning in your higher class don't worry board examination is easy absolutely aryan i am with you on this okay let's take a look at the next question everyone what are the different methods of contraception four marks question so on the contraception right it can be a case based study question that can easily come in your examination they might give you a scenario of population growth of the competition right so of course we just have to focus on the different methods over here what are the different methods of, of the contraception so four different methods we have right for the contraception that we have in a textbook we have barrier method you can mention the example now can i tell you one important thing everyone please write the examples over here even though right even though on this particular slide it's not there but you will have the images in the answer we have the examples also barrier method we have the examples of the condoms right where of course we'll see the barrier between the uh, meeting of the sperm and the ova then we have intra uterine device copper t is the example intra uterine this particular device will be placed inside the female's body okay intra uterine device that will be actually uh, avoiding the implantation right will slow down the will the slow down the chances of fertilization they will slow down the uh, speed of the sperms then we have hormonal method again taken by the females these uh, in this particular method the women will be taking a pill that will be changing the hormone level in the body okay and which hormone it usually controls or it affects is the progesterone hormone that plays a very important role in the pregnancy maintaining of the pregnancy you can write i pill i'm sure there are a lot of uh, other uh, tablets you must have heard right yes meena mala d is an example of the hormonal method it's a pill right so meena now is the right time for me to tell you that mala d was a i'm sure you'd have seen in a, a lot of television ads right is an example of the hormonal method then surgery method we have two we have vasectomy where of course we'll see this in the male where the vas vas deferent tube will be cut and tied and vasectom uh, tubectomy we see in the female where the fallopian tube will be cut and tied okay clear everyone are we clear good very good very good shift pills will stop permanently uh no so every month the female will be taking that those pills okay so here everyone this is how you can write the answer please remember to mention the examples examples are important yes gurminder ashwara ma'am did that session for class 8 those are the concept based questions right those application based questions are a little bit trickier you have to have the understanding of the concepts then only you will be able to answer those question no pills do not prevent the stds stds are nothing but the sexually transmitted diseases for the prevention of stds there are various different other methods very good everyone are you ready for the next question embryo sac 
you're talking in humans or in uh, flowers yes i think you're asking about the placenta placenta is there inside the uterus inside the female uh, basically inside the female body near the uterus right inside actually not inside the uterus on the uterus i would say very good bhariya bhariya very good everyone what is implantation implantation is nothing but the uh when the embryo get attached to the lining in the uterus we call it as the implantation what is endometrium the walls that we have in the uterus right the blood lining we call it as endometrium surgical method yes it's a surgery method so yes definitely there is a requirement of the doctor this is surgery yes surgery uh, stds can be prevented by the barrier method very good ma'am from this chapter yes you can have the expectation of case based study questions embryo sac in flower so see so in the ovary we have the ovules and the fertilization will occur there right and the growth will occur in the in, in the ovary ovary will turn into the fruit whereas the the uh, the remaining part right we have the seeds very good so if your difference between ovary and ovule so ovary of course is where we have the ovules that's the main difference you should remember intra uterine device okay easy right let's move ahead everyone let's take a look at the next question very good very good intra uterine device hyper so copper t is an example of that that is inserted into the female uterus okay uterine just remember with the word uterine uterus double fertilization batati hu have to wait for some time yes menstruation everything will be there see again everyone i think there's a very uh, good a good question so even after the tubectomy process one thing we have to remember is that we are not changing anything in the body right what are we doing we are making sure the egg is not moving through the uterus right and the sperms are not entering into the fallopian tube for the fertilization so the process every process will be occurring in the female as normal right very good hiv it's a sexually transmitted diseases hiv aids very good khalid oh sorry khiladi number of ovules and ovary depends it's they, it's not a same number depend on the plants Mina, HIV and AIDS is same. You now, everyone, we can just freeze the chat for some time. It's a very interesting question asked by Mina that AIDS or HIV are same or not? Can you tell me? Do you think that they are same? Is it same? We know that it's not same, right? HIV, right, is a virus which causes the disease that we are talking about or the disorder, which is AIDS. Okay, so Mina. HIV and AIDS are not same. HIV is a virus that causes the AIDS disease. Okay. Once after this class, you can go through the textbook. You will have better clarity. Thank you so much, everyone. So, Mil, how the twins are born is not in the syllabus, but if you want to learn more about it in our previous classes of how do organisms reproduce, we have discussed it. So you can go and watch those sessions. very good thank you thank you so much everyone the thing that which stuck to the belly's baby is a umbilical cord i think you're talking about the umbilical cord ma'am in which method hiv is an example or a om sai ram <laughs> hiv is a virus kisi mein example nahi hai bachche now i think you are just making sure ki kaise hum time ko kheenche aisa chal raha hai kya कि हम चाहते हैं कि मैम हमारे साथ राइट right, हम मैम के साथ में सुबह से शाम तक पढ़ाई करें सो लेट्स आस्क एनी क्वेश्चंस इज इट समथिंग दैट यू हैव प्लान प्लीज डू टेल मी वेरी गुड मैम इम्प्लांट्स ऑफ एम्ब्रियो और दी जाइगोट एम्ब्रियो शर्वरी इट्स एम्ब्रियो जाइगोट सी जाइगोट इज सिंगल सेल एज इट्स मूविंग इन द फिलोपियन ट्यूब इट विल बी डिवाइडिंग सो फ्रॉम वन टू 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 फोर फोर टू Eight, eight to sixteen, thirty-two, and then of course it will be getting implanted. So it's embryo and not the zygote. Yes. Okay, everyone. Let's move ahead. Oh, I'm sure you have already answered this question. How are the modes of reproduction different in unicellular and multicellular organism? Easy, right? Of course, there's a lot of difference that we have. Here we have the difference. Yes. 
So of course, in unicellular organisms, only single parent is involved, right? We'll see a identical copy of the parent, right? Whereas in the multicellular organisms, we usually have the involvement of two parents. We'll see the variation. Clear, everyone? Yes. How are we moving to the next question? And this is how you can write the answer. Unicellular organisms, simple division may. We have the results, right? Sexual reproduction may not be seen in general. No gametes formation. We have the examples. Multicellular organisms, definitely not a simple, simple division, say, will not be able to have the results, right? Sexual reproduction is more complex, right? Then sexual reproduction may involve the gamete formation and over here we can write the answer. Yes. Okay. You're asking how the STD is caused. So sexually transmitted disease is caused to the individual if they have not safe intercourse. If there is exchange of the bodily fluid, right, the other person can get. If one person is infected, or it can, they can give the disease to the next individual. Okay. Umbilical cord, umbilical cord, umbilical, umbilical cord. I didn't get your question. Yes, Vinaya, so gonorrhea and syphilis are the two types of bacterial diseases, right? Basically, these are the sexually trans, basically these are sexually uh, transmitted diseases. Two examples, gonorrhea and syphilis caused by bacteria. Ha, ah, this is a very interesting question. See, fragmentation you are saying, ma'am. How it is a multicellular organism? Spirogera is? Now, let me ask you this. Spirogera is single organism, unicellular organism or multicellular or organism. Same goes for planaria also. Now if you answer this question then we'll move ahead. Think about it everyone. Fragmentation may we have a common example Spirogera. And we have regeneration of planaria. Both of these are unicellular or multicellular. Very good. Both of these organisms are multicellular. Right? They are multicellular. That's why we have, we are discussing it over here. Clear? Yes, the question is not about asexual and sexual reproduction. The question is about unicellular and multicellular. Very good. Very good, everyone. Yes, ma'am, fragmentation and regeneration is similar. Yes, in many ways to our eyes and to our mind, but they're very different, right? We seem that they're same, but they're not same. Regeneration may... For example, if I have a small cut on my finger, right, the cells will divide and that the cut part of my skin will grow back. That is regeneration. Regeneration is not the primary mode of reproduction in the organisms. We have the case of the planaria, right, which happens very rarely if there is any accident, okay, whereas fragmentation is the primary choice of reproduction in the spirogera. Are we clear with that? Thank you, Banstick. Yes. Awesome. Very good question. Uh, the placement of the copper tea in the uterus will not be hampering in the blood flow. It's a very small device. Very small device. Yeah, we can say that in the regeneration, it's accidental. Very good. Okay, let's move ahead everyone. Let's move ahead. WBCs and RBCs, ma'am have discussed that part. I would request you to go back and see that thing. Moving to the next question, everyone. Next question. How's energy in the class? Yes, very good, very good. Here we have the question. How does reproduction help in providing stability to population of species? One marks question, everyone. I'm sure you'll be able to answer this question easily. Yes. It's copper tea, not iron tea. Very good. See, humans do regenerate, right? Yes. But not at the level of reproduction. We cannot produce our whole one arm. We are not that creatures. Right? Our body is more complex. Very good. So how does reproduction help in providing the stability to the population species? Of course, by continuing of the species and by the variation. So as the reproduction occurs, we'll have more and more offspring. It actually helps in the continuity of the species and it actually helps in having the variation, which increases the chances of the survival in the environment. 
Easy, right? It's a one marks question, everyone. So this is how you can frame your answer. You can write in your own words. Very good. Okay, now I would I would love to take a break over here. And there are various questions which are not meant for us. So let me just address that. See, I'm not ignoring anyone. Physics ka please. You have to talk to uh, Saurav sir only. I will tell him. But I am not the one who will be doing the physics part, right? So please don't spam. See, we do also have regeneration, but at a very small level, right? So regeneration required, it's a very simple process, but our body is really very complex. So we don't have the regeneration at a very higher level. It's not that, okay, if there's a cut in my neck, we ha I have one more neck. That's impossible. We can just have a small repair system in the body. Yeah, maintaining the uh, same number of um, the chromosome is also right. But again, we're talking about the survival, right? Continuing the pop, uh, population species. So that's we are focusing over here. Ma'am, one of the example of unicellular, uh, unicellular organisms, you only find out a very tricky question you have asked. Will the IUDs? No. Uh, Shrikhar? No. It will not be preventing. Regeneration and fragmentation? Uh, need I've just discussed. Yes, we discussed kiya hai. Neelam, that you have to go and ask the inventors of this. See, copper tea. So iron can get rust in our body. It can cause infection. Copper ka thoda stability hai. And it seems like fragmentation and regeneration are the topic. I think even though we'll teach you and you will study for a thousand times, you'll always have a doubt. So let me explain it to you for a final time. Okay, everyone, what is the example of fragmentation? Jaldi sir, write in the comment section. Give me one example of fragmentation. Those of you who have doubt in fragmentation and regeneration, please pay attention now. Spirogera, I want to see a long chain of Spirogera, Spirogera. Please write that. Example of regeneration. No, sorry, example of fragmentation. Sorry, my bad. Example of fragmentation, Spirogera. What happens? There is one huge Spirogera. Okay, not a size of us, but yeah, I am just saying it huge. So it is very big. It will break into the fragments like this and each of this will develop into a new organism that is fragmentation are we clear that is fragmentation give me a quick thumbs up now if you are clear with this right quick thumbs up if you are clear with this what is fragmentation so in fragmentation the fragments will break and each of the broken or the broken part will give rise to a new individual that is Fragmentation. Now, what is regeneration? Can you give me the example of regeneration? Very good, very good. Regeneration example everyone. We see regeneration. The easiest example to remember is the planaria. We see in the starfish also. Very good. Hydra. Okay. But the easiest way to, for us to remember, regeneration is where we will see if there is a broken part, see I am drawing the starfish, though my drawing is not that great, right? If there is a part, which is bead, see if, if, okay, now I can't rub it properly, I think, oh, it will just go off. See, let's suppose, see, unfortunately this small, tiny, cute little starfish lost its small part of the arm. It's not that we'll have whole organism created. It will just grow this part. In a case of planaria also, any of the part, right? It will actually just help in the growth of the remaining part. Are we clear? Yes. So if we have cut the planaria from the head, so the rest of the body part will come. Clear? So regeneration may see. Regeneration word itself give you the answer. We are regenerating something which was already there. We are generating something which was already exist. Okay. Yes, lizard tail is also, also a good example. Liver also in, in humans, we see the regeneration of liver also. Absolutely correct. So are we clear with what is the difference between fragmentation and regeneration? Yes, quick thumbs up everyone in the chat. Very good. See, lymph, I'll not be able to, uh, I will not be explaining now. Ishwara ma'am did few minutes back. You can go and watch it again, bache. Ha, yes. The surprise kyu hai? 
we are our liver cells keeps on dividing right they regenerate themselves very repairing mechanism absolutely correct very good very good i didn't get your question spirogera something okay ma'am the fragmentation cannot occur in multicellular organism aisa maine kab bola shrishti i said regeneration ke bare mein please everyone let's pay attention you will like you will say ki ma'am aap galat padha rahe ho nahi maine regeneration ke bare mein bola tha ki regeneration cannot occur in the humans at a very larger scale you see that's what see age if right if i lost if i lost my one finger do you think i can have that finger back shrishti let's say focus right i not able to have my finger back right it includes lot of things see bone bhi hai muscle bhi hai skin bhi aayegi nerves ka bhi hai important all itna sab cheez hai regeneration mein nahi hongi all together it's very difficult chote organisms mein simple organisms mein it is possible yes nails okay they are dead right of course keratin hai right we say that so the proteins hai wo hai there's no involvement of a cells definitely yahan se cells are making its dead cells right that we say a transplant ek finger that's a different whole case ha it grows into a whole organism but but which part is growing into agar head se kaata hai to lower part will come if lower part kaata hai to full part will come so the regeneration actually gives you a hint that our cells have a capacity to divide okay good here's also bilkul bilkul non living okay everyone let's just come back to the next important topic which i mean see looking in the chat again and again mitosis and meiosis because now it is important for me to explain you this acha mitosis mein will have the same chromosome number will have same chromosome number to start with so that you all of all of you will remember right it's the equational division equal division right and after the mitosis one parent will give two daughter cells are we clear see these thing you should remember amoeba mein regeneration nahi wave let's not yeah i have answered your question ma'am one doubt that mitosis occurs after fertilization i will tell you that just focus over here rakshit are abhi riya abhi break we just came back from break yes very good very good everyone are we clear in mitosis one organism will give rise right one cell actually sorry not the organism one cell will give rise to two two cells basically chromosome number will remain same and we call it as the we call it as the equational division i got your point right so if you pay attention you know you don't have to see the screen also don't worry so in mitosis we have the same number of chromosome the number of chromosome will remain constant right we call it as a equational division and most importantly one cell will give rise to the two daughter cells are we clear very good right are we clear about the mitosis everyone see this will not come in your examination but you should you should have an understanding okay so the cells in our skin right in different parts of our body right what it does it does the mitosis yes so the examples that we see in the mitosis is can be our skin different other body parts right where of course we'll see the mitosis happening now meiosis may it's a reductional division right it's a reductional division now what is the meaning of reductional division that one cell right when it divides the number of chromosome from 2n it will become n right the number of chromosomes will be half yes right the number of chromosomes will be half from 2n it will become n and over here at the end we will have four daughter cells clear everyone see this is enough right this is a good information for us for our class 10 If you want to learn more about it we have done a separate session on that. So I don't want 
you to have an you know a little bit confusion over there if you feel like it's you want to learn please go and watch our other sessions yes because this will not come in your examination in board for sure very good pratibha amoeba ka is not the example here bachche meiosis mein nahi example aayega meiosis we only see in the germ cells like sperm ovum yes uh class schedule for the channel please go and check on the community post so today we have this class then we have a class at 5 pm and at 10 pm oh, sorry 6 pm okay everyone let's move ahead now everyone quick thumbs up jaldi se everyone a quick thumbs up yes very good everyone very good a quick thumbs up i need from your side and we'll be move we'll be moving ahead see i'm just focusing on the important parts i don't want you to get lost in unnecessary topics which are not important from the exam point of view yes very good very good everyone now let's move ahead to the next question that we have what could be the reason for adopting contraceptive methods one marks question why should one adopt to the contraceptive methods and the answer is really very easy and straight forward to prevent the unwanted pregnancy it plays a very important role in the family planning helps to maintain a good maternal health and help in the prevention of stds okay easy very easy so we here for one marks question you can write these points and you'll have one marks in your pocket easy peasy yes very good to avoid the pregnancy to avoid the stds very good adyan dev yash spiderman riya pratibha adarsh nayak akshat indra sia okay now everyone with this particular question you yes you can get full marks king in bio by studying all of it by practicing the question paper you will be sorted bachche okay now everyone with this particular question we are done with the with the chapter how do organism reproduce right now we we'll are moving ahead to the next chapter which is heredity and evolution now this is a very interesting chapter right in from this particular chapter heredity and evolution evolution is not a part of our syllabus first of all so we have to remove this evolution from here still we write heredity and evolution in our textbook also but only heredity is a part of our syllabus okay very good very good shivam double fertilization okay let me explain you double fertilization now what is double fertilization can you tell me the meaning of double yes can you tell me the yes can you tell me the um, meaning of double jaldi batao what is the meaning of double two yes ha do 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 duplicate copy hona twice very good and what is the definition of fertilization fertilization kya hai what is the definition of fertilization very good fusion of gametes right fusion of male and female gamete to form the zygote so we are clear with the meaning of the word that we have over here double fertilization two fertilization when it's happening we call it as double fertilization first of course is a very fancy fancy word syngamy right what is syngamy what is syngamy syngamy is nothing but fusion of male and female gamete is called as syngamy in flowers right double fertilization we are discussing in flowers are we clear right syngamy me what we what we see we see the fertilization of the or the fusion of the male and the female gamete so the pollen tube me jo ye do gametes se one gamete will come and will fuse with the egg we call it as the syngamy right it will help us in getting the zygote then we have one more male gamete right this male gamete will go and fuse with polar nuclei are we clear everyone they fuse with polar nuclei yes so it has two nuclei all together and we have one nuclei over here right we get 
we call this whole process as the triple fusion. Why we call it as triple fu uh, fusion or the triple fertilization? Because teen nuclei mill ray, right? One from the male gamete and two from the polar nuclei. And it actually helps in the formation of endosperm, which provides a nourishment to the growing embryo. Are we clear? This cannot directly come in your board examination, but it is important. Are we clear? Yes, very good, very good. 3N pen endosperm, absolutely correct. Advantages of vegetative propagation, it actually helps increasing the production, right? It actually helps in increasing the yield for the farmers. Very good. Human evolution we don't have in the syllabus, but so we will not be discussing today. Good, very good everyone. So let me quickly recap this whole thing. So double fertilization occurs in flower where the fertilization occur twice. First, the male gamete will fuse with the egg and we, it will form the zygote. We call it as sig gamete. Then one more male gamete will fuse with the polar nuclei. Polar nuclei has two nucleus and male gamete has one nucleus. When the fusion will occur, we'll have three nucleus in total. We call it as the triple fusion. And once there are two time fertilization, we call it as double fertilization. Very good, very good. Yes, endosperm is a food for the zygote. Absolutely correct. Harsh Bache, please go and watch Ashwara Ma'am discussion on the reflex action. Very good, everyone. Very good. Nice. Everyone, are we clear? Pollination is nothing but the transfer of the pollen grains, right? From the anther to the stigma. We call it as pollination. Aman, I have explained that part. Okay, everyone, are we, are we ready to move ahead? Yes, are we ready to move ahead quickly? Thumbs up, everyone. Thumbs up here in the chat. Let's have six, 650 likes. 650 likes, everyone. Oh, 660 we have. Jo, Joyman, are you sure? Let's not spread this news. Okay, let's move ahead. Next chapter, heredity. Here is a question for all of you, everyone. Let's take a look over here. Polar nuclei, but chip, basically embryo, ke, uh, sorry, ovule ke under, there are cell. Right, we have, they have two nuclei. No, Piho, no, it is not considered that. Everyone, jaldi se. Ha, woi to. Joyman, you just scared me. <laughs> but thank you for breaking the, you know, lighting up the mood. Very good. Yes, cross pollination is the transfer of the pollen grains from one flower to the another flower. Okay. Okay, we have the answers already. Very good. A Mendel experiment, right of course, consists of a breeding tall plants bearing violet flowers with the short pea plants bearing white flowers. The progeny all, in the progeny, right, all were having the violet flowers. But almost half of them were short. This suggests that the genetic makeup of the parent is what? Yes, easy, right? I'm sure you have answered this question. Right, can we make a chart? Right, can we make a unit square over here? So one thing they are saying that all tall plants bear violet flowers with short pea plants bear the white flowers. Yes? Very good, very good. Okay, the progeny, if the progeny all had the violet flower. So that means it's dominant. But almost half of them were short. So here we have the options everyone, capital T, capital T, W, T, uh, sorry, capital W and capital W. Option B, capital T, capital T, small w. Uh, option C, capital T, small t, W, W, capital W. And option D is capital T, small t and capital W and small w. Very easy, right? So see, in the question itself they have given us, tall, tall, capital, capital W. That should be the case, right? If everything is dominant. And small t, small t, small w and small w. If everything is recessive. But 
in in this particular cross we can say that they were violet all the flowers are violet in color but there are few plants which are short also so in that way we we can clearly say that capital t is definitely there then we have the small t and we have capital w capital w that is the answer which is c are we clear yes everyone are we clear with this quickly tell me everyone are we clear with this how it can be c because c in the question itself they are saying that the progeny the, the f1 generation has a tall plant as well as short plant also for a short plant to express itself both the parents should have small t so i'm sure that would be the case clear right then of course what we have capital w and capital w which is the uh, characteristic features that how it is re representing the violet color in the flower which is dominating yes okay yes chira you explained it again yes very good so everyone sorry over here if you take a look tall plant acha you tell me acha let's do it really very slowly acha how you will represent a tall plant jaldi se those of you who have doubt i'm explaining it for you for example if you have a tall plant how you, how will explain it right how we will be writing it in the examination capital t and capital t very good a small plant how we will be writing about a small plant small plant very good capital small t and small t very good both of these are homozygous both are same now how we will be writing a color which is dominating in nature right a violet color which is dominating in nature how we will be representing it capital w capital w absolutely correct then how we will be representing the small one the recessive color right white flowers very good small w and small w now in the question right what we have in the question is that we have the tall plants right in the progeny right we have the tall plants and we have the short plant also so that means that the parent right that we have they are heterozygous tall that means that they both have capital t and small t okay yes and they are telling that the violet color flower is dominating so in it's simple it should mean that we have w w okay are we clear everyone tv channel yeah it could it could be but in the question they have given us like this okay very good so everyone i hope that all of you got yes okay you will be getting the pdf on the telegram so are we clear so when i at the medium height we don't have that thing when we discuss all of it right we either have the tall and the short yes very good very good so if you didn't understand you can go back and revise it right you'll be able to find the answer can we take a look at the ranjit at the chat there are a lot of spamming happening can we delete them yes if you want i'll give you the names also yeah we can see some names please do delete them and there are a lot of disturbance in the class we'll take a while we'll uh, we will uh, time out these students and we'll come back yes everyone very good very good so we are done with this question let's take a look at the next question everyone yeah here we go uh, a student found that a children with a light eye color i likely to have parent with a light eye color on the basis uh, we have discussed this question right on the basis of this particular question can we see anything whether the light color trait is dominating or recessive why or why not yes quickly everyone yes everyone uh, quickly solve this question
Yes, everyone, I hope that you have solved this question. See, we have discussed this question already. I'm sure you remember this question, right? So, of course, this information is not enough, right? Very good. Yes, this information that we have is not enough for us to identify whether it's dominating or recessive. So, they have said that we have light color, light color, right? Of course, we have the light color, but of course, this is not the clear information, right? So, of course, we can write that. No, the given formal statement, we cannot say anything because it's not the correct information that we have over here. Until unless we have the genotype of the particular individual, right? The parent will not be able to find it. Okay? Very good. So, see, this is, you can take a screenshot of this only, everyone. Yes. So, it's a very easy question. Awesome. Let's move ahead everyone to the next question. Outline a project which aim to find the dominating coat of a dog color. Now this is easy everyone. Yes. Now we're talking about the coat. So let me give an example. We have capital B, capital B as a black coat which is dominating. We have small b and small b as a recessive coat which is brown coat. Okay, can you, everyone, can you quickly, yes, right, very good everyone, yes, okay, very good, very good. So what we have over here, let's quickly make a, let's quickly make the punit square. So now many of you are asking about the laws, right? So the first law of the law of inheritance, first law in the Mendel talks about the law of domination, right? Law of dominance. So the dominating character will always suppress, right? Always suppress the recessive character. Right, so we have capital B, capital B as a dominating character, small b, small b is a recessive character. So if the cross is there between the dominating and the recessive trait, the dominating trait will always suppress the recessive character. Everyone, are we clear with this? Tell me, are we clear with this? Yes? Are we clear, right? Quick thumbs up everyone. So that's the first law. That is the first law of dominance. Second law talks about law of segregation. Now the law of segregation says that, that during the gamete formation, we will see the separation, right? The gametes will separate out. Second law, here we have everyone. This is law of segregation. During the, during the segregation, what we will see? The gametes will segregate. Are we clear? See, we have two gametes. Capital B, capital B, small b and small b. That is law of segregation. Yes, that's law of segregation. Are we clear? Everyone who have doubt in law of segregation, are we clear? Ha. Ye ek interesting question hai ki ma'am, dominate hai kaise pata chalta hai? Because it will be expressing itself again and again. Okay? So art, sports, so in the genetics we always talk about the dominance. So black is, uh, it's mostly dominating in the hair color. Coat, maybe black is dominating. Yes? Yes. We do have time, right? We do have time. Okay. So everyone, are we clear with the law of dominance? Yes? Yes. Very good. Okay. So that, these are the two law. Law of independence, sorry, law of the law of dominance and law of segregation. We'll discuss about the law of independence or assortment in some time. Once we have the question, we'll discuss that law. Shiva, we'll discuss it, but just wait for some time. Now, let's take a look at this particular question, everyone. We have this question over here, right? Now, we'll make up unit square. Capital B, capital B, small b and small b. All will be heterozygous. Right, that's, his, that's the F1 generation. Yes or no? Everyone, I'm sure you remember this. If there's a cross between this, right, what we'll have?
Yes, this is heterozygous. Very good. This is our F1 generation. In F1 generation, all have black coat. Now, for the F2 generation, what we'll do, we'll, we'll see the F2, F1 ka selfing. Yes, everyone, you remember this? Very good, very good. So, what we'll do, we'll make a, another punit square. Capital B, capital B, capital B and small b, capital B and small b, small b and small b. So, now the ratio will be... 3 is to 1, which is genotype, sorry, which is phenotype. And 1 is to 2 is to 1 will be the genotype. Okay? Everyone clear? But ma'am, dominating wala do question. So the question is asking basically, the question was that you have a project line. Right? They have mentioned about a dog. So, we are taking it as an example. Right? Okay? See, we are discussing it as an example. So, we usually in the genetics, we keep black as a dominating. In studies, right? We always, uh, black is a dominating color as compared to brown. Yes. Bright art spot and Raghu Sudha have answered your question. Right, I hope that it's clear. So everyone, this is how you can frame your answer. Right, so basically it's a case that we have to project it out, right? So keeping this as, a, this as an example, you can write. Clear? Clear everyone? Yes, it is important, right? So we have capital B, capital B for the coat, black coat. And small b and small b for this brown coat. Clear everyone? We can write answer of heredity in paragraphs. It's good to write answer in points. Yes, if this question comes for cat, you can also write the same thing. See, again in this question, everyone, what is important is that to, you have to just make sure the, uh, about the color code that you want to do. Right? They're talking about the fur. So you can have, if you're making brown as dominating, you can have white as recessive. It's just an example. That's the easiest way for us to remember. Clear everyone? Quick thumbs up. Yes, so with this particular question, we discussed two law. Law of dominance and law of segregation. Others, you will. In the examination, they clearly mention that which is dominating and which is recessive. Very good, everyone. Very good. Nia, so we don't have a proper definition, right? So you can look at the previous session that we have, right? For the proper definition of the law of segregation. For one thing for all of us to remember is that in law of segregation mentioned about the gametes and their segregation. Now it means that in this example, any color dominating or recessive. Ha, it's an example. It's an example that we have over here. So example may we have taken black as a dominating color which is usually dominating color as compared to brown. Okay? Yes. Shirayu, just one thing remember in the law of segregation we'll see the splitting of the gametes. Can you see over here? The gametes are getting split. Okay? Yes? Very good. Phenotype. Phenotype day is nothing but the physical feature that we see. Right? By looking at this, right, the black coat, we can say, oh, it's, it has a black coat. But the genotype will actually help us to understand that what is the actual genetic makeup. Is it both capital, both small, or one capital, one small? F1 and F2 are the generation, first generation, second generation. Yes, everyone, are we clear? Thank you, Sohani, for helping your friends out. You can take, you can take Raghu Sudha. But then you have to mention that you are counting black as recessive and brown as dominating. Usually we keep black as dominating just because it's easy for us to remember and do the question with. Okay, everyone. We have few more questions. Jaldi, let's quickly look at this question. How is the equal genetic contribution of male and female parent ensured in the progeny? 
Easy question, right? Right, easy question everyone. Hello everyone. Few more questions. Abhinav, few more questions. Bache. How is the equal genetic contribution of a male and female parent ensured in the progeny? By of course, by the by the sex determination and by we know that by the meiosis we know that the chromosomes number will the chromosomes will be mixing together and will be coming to the next generation right so male have 46 chromosome female also have 46 chromosome right and the males have x and y chromosome and female have x chromosome okay so once the fusion is done we will get exactly the 46 chromosome 22 from the father and 22 from the pair uh, from the mother right yes bright arts plot progeny is generation absolutely correct yes chromosomes have half during the gametes formation absolutely correct so that's how right in the next generation we will as a child will receive the equal amount of the chromosome or the equal number of chromosome from both the parents Clear everyone? I think initially you asked about the autosomes. So autosomes are these 22 chromosomes, right? Right? And the rest one pair is a sex chromosome that will be helping us determine the gender of the individual. Clear everyone? Clear, clear. This is a very easy question. I hope it's clear to each one of you. Yes. Right everyone? Very good, very good. So this particular topic, right, sex determination is very important from the exam point of view. A three marks question can easily come on this everyone. So please practice more question on sex determination also. So this is how you can write and with this we are done. Everyone, we are just left with the last question. I know you have been studying for a long time and many for asking for the break. So we can have a break of five minutes. Because this environment question we can finish in very short time. Yes? So I am here. If you, if you want break, you tell me. If you don't want break, you tell me. Yes. Okay, I'll explain the independent assortment. So according to the independent assortment, yes everyone, those of you who are uh, independent assortment ka law, I'll explain. So, according to the independent assortment law, what we have, a very important thing over here is that when during the gamete formation, they will separate, right? They will be moving separately. So, important thing in the independent assortment is that they will be moving independently and they will express themselves. It's not that, that when they are together, then they only explain, uh, express themselves. Right? Even if they are with some other gamete or other allele, they will be expressing. Independent means what? Independent means that they are expressing, right? They are independent. They are not, they are not dependent on something. Even if the other gamete is not with them. Let's suppose we have two capital B, two capital B, right? Even if there is one capital B, if this capital B pairs with small b, it will be expressing itself. Right? So that is a law of independent assortment. They will separate it out and they will be expressing themselves. Are we clear? Are I can see break, no break. Are is with the focus karo jaldi se. Everyone, are we clear about the independent law assortment? Law of independent assortment. Are we clear? Jaldi se. Clear, right? Awesome. Chali, I think then many of you, majority feels that there is requirement of no break. I am with you on that. Let's move ahead and let's discuss about this question. Very good. Here we have. Achha, I think uh, Ranji sir, we have to do a poll now. See, we live in an amazing country where we have the democracy. So now the decision will be made on the polls. So the question will be yes or no. You Whether you want break or whether you don't want break. Yes or no. So whatever be the poll, right? I am going with that. Now everyone, you have the polls right on your screen. Yes, please vote for the polls. I can't see the polls. It's there. 
Yes, everyone. See, those of you who want po break, vote for yes. Those of you who don't want break, vote for zero. All of you should vote. Jaldi say. See, I am with you. I am with both of you. If you want break, if the majority wins, we'll have a break. If the majority says that we don't want break, I am with you. Jaldi everyone, quickly vote. Yes, we'll have the polls for MCQ's question also. Got your point, we'll have it. Okay, I think, see everyone, I think 87 of you have voted. 52% says you want break and 47% says that you don't want break. As we live in a nation where the majority, where of course we listen to each one of us, majority wins over here. So we'll take a break of very small time, 5 minutes. Five minutes break everyone, we'll meet at, chalo, we'll meet at 3.25, a good time, okay, clear, so quickly hydrate yourself, come back, this, the difference between mono hybrid is that we're just talking about one single uh, trait, like the height, and in dihybrid cross we talk about two traits, right, we let's suppose seed the color and seed shape, okay, so everyone, we'll be right back, all of you come back hydrated and we'll finish our session in 15 minutes then. So I'm here only in the studio. We'll quickly come back.
Yes, everyone, here we go. So here everyone, last chapter, last, last chapter, here we have our environment. So let's everyone, this is the easiest chapter, right? This is the easiest, easiest chapter that we have. So let's quickly get over with this particular chapter. Yes, in just 5-10 minutes. So let's get started. Here we have, which of the following groups contain only biodegradable item? Easy peasy everyone. Yes. Maha Asan chapter, I know it's really very easy, right? Okay, everyone. Yes, very good, everyone. Uh, which of the following groups are contain only biodegradable items? So we know that biodegradable, uh, biodegradable things or the items, right, that we're discussing are the one that could be easily broken down, right, by the microorganisms. And non-biodegradable material is something like plastic that will take ages and bio-microorganisms cannot decompose it. So the options over here, right, we have grass, flour, leather, grass, wood, plastic, fruit peel, uh, cake, lime juice or cake, wood and glass. So it's very easy, right, I'm sure you have the answer with you. So we have it over here. Yes. Very good. And the correct answer over here, right, of course, we have two answers. If we see, right, we have A and of course, that could be also. I think this lime juice they have mentioned in terms of the plastic bottles over here. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yes. A could be the correct answer for us, right? Glass will take a lot of time, right? So, we will not be focusing on the glass. Yes. I think this lime juice over here and I am not sure over here. Yes, I'm, I'm, I think that it could be a plastic bottle. Very good. So here we have, let's move ahead everyone to the next question. Which of the following consists of food chain? Easy question everyone. So we have, um, yes. Very good. Yes, lime juice is man-made. Very good. So we will go for option number A over here. Yes, we have the polls everyone. Now pick up the poll uh, and pick the correct answer. For, for the previous question, option number A is the correct answer. Here we go, which of the following consists of a food chain? So we have the food chains, right? Which of these is the correct food chain? Grass, wheat, mango, grass, goat, human, goat, cow, elephant, grass, fish, goat. Everyone quickly vote. I hope that all of you are voting, right? We can see the polls. And we can end the poll now. The easiest, right, option over here is option B, absolutely correct. Food chain is nothing but a linear sequence, a linear chain, right? A linear chain over here that, of course, what we see over here in the lead uh, in a food chain, that the energy move from one level to the another level. So we have grass that will be eaten by the goat. And, of course, goat can be easily eaten by the man. So that is a correct sequence. Yes, wheat eat grass, is it? Very good, everyone. Option B is correct. Okay. Next question, everyone, on your screen. Here we have the easiest question. Which of the following are environment-friendly practices? Oh, nice. Which of these is the environmental-friendly practices? Leather is, we get it from the animals, right? So, it, it is easily decomposable, right? We'll see the decomposition of the leather because, of course, it's the skin of the animals. Very good. Carrying cotton bags to put the purchase while shopping in. Definitely it's a good practice. Switching off unnecessary lights and fans. Okay, very good practice. Walking to a school instead of getting your mother to drop um, you on her scooter. Okay, but having said that over here, the school should be closed. It should not be 46 or 50 kilometers away from your home. You cannot walk and go to your school. Right, in that case, you have to go... Uh, or you have to use a mode of transportation. So, the correct answer will be what everyone? I can see the correct answer in the chat. We can end the polls now. And the correct answer is option number D. Very good everyone. Option number D is absolutely correct. All of these are environmental friendly practices that we have. And we should be doing so all of the above. Very good. Okay. Let's take a look at the next question everyone. What will happen if we kill an all, if we kill all organisms in one tropic level? So we have different tropic level, right? 
we have producers, we have primary produce, uh, primary consumers, secondary consumers, etc, etc. Anita, we are not discussing in-text question, right? So we have discussed in-text question in our sessions previously. So you can watch those sessions. Okay. What will happen if we kill all organism in one tropic level? If we kill all organisms in any of one of the tropic level, what we'll see? We will see that there will be the disbalance, right? We will see the ecosystem will get disturbed. So over here we have, right? We know that energy transfers from one tropic level to another tropic level. If one tropic level is completely gone, the other, other tropic level will get affected. So this is how you can frame your answer, everyone. Okay, and this is how you can write. Killing an organism at one tropic level will increase the number of the level, right? At the lower tropic level, right? So the numbers as it becomes higher, they'll not be getting the enough amount of food. We'll see the food where we'll be getting disturbed and eventually we will see the hampering in the ecosystem. Ma'am, level 5 food chain. So we have producers, we have primary consumers, secondary consumer, tertiary consumers and the quadratory consumers, right? At the end, we have the decomposers, but decomposers we never include in the food chain, right? They're independent. Whatever be the animal at the top of a food chain will eventually die and it will be decomposed by the decomposers. Okay? Angel, I have answered your question. Very good. You want the example? We usually have, uh, very rarely we go ahead with the examples which have four or five. Yes. So the easiest food chain for all of us to remember, let's suppose we have grass. Then we have grasshopper. Right, we have snake, let's have frog, then we have snake and at the end we have eagle. Okay, yes, so here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 tropic level ka food chain that you were asking. Okay, Shauri, you are asking why we don't have the decomposers in the food chain because it is common. It's not that okay, they will be choosy in eating this or that. No, right? They will be there. Even if it's a case of for plants or for the animals, right? The decomposers are there. So that's why we do not include them in any of the food chains. Food chain producers, primary producers, primary, tertiary, secondary and tertiary. Very good. Yes. Yes, Tanishk. Good, everyone. I'm super proud. Yes, Vinayak was saying, ma'am, it's the easiest chapter, my favorite chapter. I am with you. Veera, I've just explained it. You can practice it once. Like you can, uh, you know, go back and you can, uh, and you can listen to it. It will be fine for you. Yes, do practice life processes. Definitely. Okay. Will the impact of removing all organisms in a tropic level be different for different tropic level? Can the organism of any tropic level be removed without causing any damage to the ecosystem? It's a very hypothetical, very high uh, thinking question if you remove an organism right if you remove an all organism from one tropic level does it create any difference or if we can remove any organism it will be creating some hazard or some disturbance or not very good so we see for for a question like this there's one thing which is clear we should not be disturbing the tropical levels right all the organisms are important because they help us in maintaining the balance in the ecosystem. Okay? So, even if there's one organism, if there's a, for let's suppose if the frog has been deleted from the full food chain, what will happen? The number of grasshopper will increase. More grasshoppers means they'll be eating more of the grass. What will happen to the other organism? In that case, apart from that, the snake will die off of hunger. Snake will be like, where is my food? If snake is not eating, definitely the snake will also be dying and the eagle will be looking for the food. So all the organisms are important, right? If we disturb one of the organism or if one organism is removed from the food chain, everything at every level will be getting affected. What will happen if you remove eagle? Just think about it. The amount, the number of snakes in an ecosystem will increase, right? We don't want, we don't want to be in that state, right, where we have king cobras every, everywhere around us or any snake in a matter of that fact. 
all organisms have to be present in an ecosystem in a right numbers so that so that there's a ecological balance very good yes see the extinct species right when they went from our ecosystem definitely they had hampered a lot of things now that they are not there they have some replacements right but of course once they were not there i'm sure it would have affected the ecosystem very good okay so everyone this is how you can frame your answer i'm not reading this part you can take a screenshot but what we have discussed it's ha we have it on the screen write in your own words right once you have understood the concept write in your own words here we go to the next question we have the biological magnification here those of you who have doubts in this particular question here is your answer what is biological magnification will the level of this magnification be different at different level of the ecosystem easy yes yes we i am just we are just finishing up the session so we know that the biological magnification is a phenomenon in which the concentration of chemical toxin increases at each tropic level so as the mass of the individual increase right as a number of cells in the body will increase the amount of toxin will also increase in the individual are we clear and it is it and this increases with at each tropic level okay are we clear how pesticide enter into the human diet sinha ss by this for example if we have a plant right if you are eating a corn but that corn was grown by adding lots lots of pesticides so once this pesticide is there this plant containing pesticide if we eat directly we are getting the uh, toxin in our body but if these corns are eaten by a chicken and then if you are consuming the chicken that's how directly uh, not directly but indirectly in the food chain we are getting the toxin getting accumulated in the body are we clear sinha why the flow of energy is unidirectional need it is unidirectional because of the tropic level in the tropic level we know that the energy move from one tropic level to the another right it's not going in five different direction but it's a linear way that we have okay that's why it's unidirectional not ignoring you i think i am seeing your message for the very first time please if you have a valid question please do ask this question yes very good kastub yes very good everyone so this is how we have this question so everyone again i am specifying specifically mentioning over here two marks question it's a very very important question i'm sure you would have seen this in your examination here we had the proper definition of biological magnification preet gere you can take a screenshot of this yes in humans it's widely spread yes shivam it is and it is not just in humans but in different other organisms also what if all the garbage produced are biodegradable that will be the ideal case bansik but we do have plastic all around so having all the biodegradable waste is a dream dream right but we can achieve that for sure thank you very good thank you everyone this came in your board examination pre board sorry very good everyone moving to second last question i think easy peasy questions everyone okay what are the problem caused by non biodegradable waste that we generate easy right see such questions everyone we don't have to think about it from class 6 we are studying if you remember your class 6 we have studied uh, garbage in garbage out this is what we had at that time also so seems like we are just you know adding layers of knowledge but few topics remain as it is very good the problem that are caused by non biodegradable waste is that they take a longer time and of course they increase the pollution around us very good so of course this is how you can write they cannot be decomposed by the microbial action and of course it just increases the amount of waste that we have around us so two marks question everyone yes i'll explain about the ozone in a minute in a minute very good everyone very good ha huh. okay next question everyone here we have if all the waste we generate is biodegradable will this have no impact on the environment think about it everyone it was a question asked by benstick why decomposers cannot 
okay, not decomposes non biodegradable waste so sina biodegradable waste right of course including the living organisms right the dead organisms be it the plant or the animals vegetable peels uh, you know fruit peels so all of these right can be easily decomposed it's a food it's a food for the microorganisms right whereas a plastic i don't think do they get anything by eating this plastic as of now no there are few microorganism that that can actually uh, you know break the plastic they are just doing that part but eventually all the organisms especially the living organisms do whatever they do to have the nutrition the basic need okay that's a reason okay everyone so here we have the answer thank you for giving up the answer everyone over here so the if we have the biodegradation of if we have all the biodegradable waste the decomposition is definitely slow it will have it will create a lot of smell around us for sure right dumping area will become a breeding mosquito ground and breeding ground for the mosquitoes right and aquatic organisms can get deplete oxygen so here we have few things that are mentioned over here okay yes it can still pollute the environment though we know that it's very good but still it can contribute in adding the pollution to our environment are we clear ma'am which mechanism plays an important role in the transportation both xylem and phloem both transportation the the transportation the transportation they do they actually help very good hello everyone okay let's take a look at the next question everyone yes here we have the question on ozone I think few of you have the question on the ozone. Here we have, why is damage to the ozone layer is caused a, a cause of concern? What step be taken to limit the damage? So everyone, remember this equation. I will explain the ten percent law of energy also. So we know that everyone in our atmosphere, right above the atmosphere, where we have the ozone, right? Definitely, ozone protects us from the harmful UV radiation. Yes or no? very good right it plays a very important role in giving providing us a protection from the harmful uv radiation so ozone is the formula of ozone is o3 so what happens in the atmosphere over there we have oxygen as an atom so once this oxygen as an atom is there right yes and when it combines with the oxygen molecule which is there in the atmosphere it form the ozone okay this is super easy everyone do remember this right do remember this everyone right and the ozone plays a very important role in providing the protection from the harmful uv radiation if the ozone is not there we might right if there's a depletion of the ozone is happening if the uv radiation comes to our planet and if it reaches us or any living organism it can cause various uh, damage to our dna skin cancer eye uh, diseases skin diseases etc okay Ma'am, which is an aquatic food chain? So, aquatic food chain may you have plankton, zooplankton, fish, duck, all of these. Very good, very good. Yes, I've answered your question in the food chain in the aquatic organism. Okay, so this is about the ozone, right? Those of you who have a doubt in ozone, I hope that you are clear. And this is how you can form your answer. Now, very important thing that you are asking about the ten percent law of energy. So, ten percent law of the energy states that only ten percent energy moves from one tropic level to the another tropic level. So, if we have ten thousand energy over here, only thousand will move. Okay? Then to the next tropic level, only hundred, and at the end, we'll just have ten. So, these are the producers. Then we have primary consumers. Secondary consumers and the tertiary consumer. The ten percent law of energy means that as we move up or as we move from one tropic level to another tropic level, only ten percent energy moves. Clear? How do fungi of breed moles take food? So, babe, they be, so so fungi have a very special way, right? They are sap, uh, they are saprophytic, saprotropic in nature basically. They eat on dead and decay organisms. Yes, Akansha. Ha huh, CFCs are the chlorofluorocarbon they are present in the air conditioner refrigerator i'm sure you would have seen the plastic cups that we use right the foam wala cups now definitely we have reduced the usage of these materials CFCs are chlorofluorocarbon yes nikhil tanish akansha 
Prashant, Preet. Yes, very good, Tanishk, Devanshi. Ha, we should be using electrical cars. Now we have EV vehicles. Eventually, maybe in 4-5 years, we have a good ecosystem where the use of electrical cars are really very easy. Now, it's not completely banned, Shivam. Right, we have uh, almost a verge of banning. Still, we you would find some products in the uh, in the markets, right? Banned from the government side, would say. So planktons, right? Planktons and zoo planktons. So of course we have these small small plants, water plants, right? Then we have the zoo plankton, which are small tiny water animals. Yes, very good, very good. How to manage the garbage we produce? So, of course, a very important concept that we have in our textbook is the 3 R. Or sometimes uh, we have 5 R's also. 3 R, remember, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Right? If we have include the 5 R, may, we have the reduce, reuse, recycle, repurpose. They have added repurpose over here also, right? And then we have one more, which is the Refuse. Refuse the uses of something. But the three R is easy for us to remember. We have reduce, reuse and recycle. Right? With this everyone, we are done with the whole syllabus NCRT questions. Now Tanish, there is a new technology that has been there, right? That uses the, the less use of these CFCs. Very good. Everyone, do practice the question for the energy transfer law. It's usually asked in the examination. Yes. Everyone, yes. So, we are ending the session. We'll call Ashwarya ma'am now. Right, both of us will end the session together. Yes, thank you so much everyone for staying with us for such a long time. I hope that all of you got your cle doubt clear. See everyone, there's one thing which I want to say it again and again in... Sessions like these, right, our intention is to make sure that you have gone through each and everything. When you come to the class, there are thousands of students who are there with us and we, we try our best to answer all your doubts. Sometimes you might feel it's very repetitive, but that's a need, right? They struggle with that, so we are helping it. Having said that, we always try our best to fasten up the process also. If you have any doubts, as we all will tell you, please watch the one shots NCRT questions where we've already discussed it, right ma'am? Yes, of course, everybody. And of course, for next class onwards, we also recommend that you do one reading of it. So normally the sessions are scheduled one day before and you get an idea of what's going to happen. So we recommend that all of you come with the preparation also so that you have targeted doubts and you have specific doubts, right? So at this point, your preparation is also very important. And with this, of course, I hope all of you have enjoyed this class and I hope if you do enjoy this class, let us know in the comments below. And I think before we wind up, ma'am, let's give them a homework as well yes so the homework questions of course now there's one homework question which is there in the chat i think you're talking about the energy percent law so let's suppose for example we have thousand ten thousand energy at the first tropic level that is the plant how much amount of the energy will be there at the tertiary consumer easy question i i hope that you will remember the question Yes. So, do you want to add a question, ma'am? No, no. This only. So, ten thousand in tropic level one. What is it going to be in T three? I mean, T four. Ah, T four. T four. Right. So, this is your homework question. All of you need to give us the answer in the comments below. We'll be checking your answer. And if you enjoyed today's class, please make sure you go ahead and like this video. Do not forget to share this video, and most importantly, stay subscribed to the channel because by now you understand that we focus a lot on your academic outcomes, making sure that you get the best of the best here at by. So go ahead and make sure that you hit the subscribe button as well. And I think with this, of course, ma'am, we shall be winding up. Yes. Just very important one thing is that when you are mentioning the answer, please mention with the unit. Yes. If you are not writing the unit, your marks will be getting reduced. So please make sure you write the answer with the unit. Okay. There are two questions, ma'am, that we have. We can take them. What is a, why the food chain is limited? Because, of course, if we have more organisms or a more tropic level in the food chain, the amount of energy will one will be receiving will be very small, very low at one point. That's why the food chain is limited. Second doubt, ma'am, they have about the drought. You can tell them. What is the drought? The drought, famine drought. Huh. Okay, so basically... <laughs>
So basically what happens is that we know that when there's limited amount of water, like sometimes when the rainfall gets affected and the rainfall pattern gets affected, we know that the access to water becomes less. And when access to water becomes less due to, of course, again, deforestation and multiple factors, so on and so forth, we see that not, due to not enough water that is available, we see that, you know, it affects the cropping patterns. Right, yes. ma'am? Yeah. See, if this effect we have discussed, cause cancer, animal disease, DNA damage, skin, uh, skin cancer, etc, etc. Yes. And everyone else, the remaining doubts that are there, let us know in the comments below as we'll have to wind up and you have a class again at 4 p.m. We will see you all very soon, everybody. Up until then, take care. Lots of love to all of you. Thank you, everyone. And keep on learning with Baijus and stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.